It's a new day, and with that comes new opportunity as the Lopes play their final regular season game with a shot at making history. A win tonight over Utah Valley would allow GCU to claim a share of the WAC title for the first time in school history. And so, with bragging rights on the line, revenge on their mind, and a chance for the number one seat in the tournament looming, the Lopes take the court tonight at GCU Arena. And folks, this is as big as it gets in a season finale. Kate Longworth welcoming you to the Lopes pregame show driven by Nissan. Coming at you live here inside GCU Arena on Fox 10 Extra. And this is why, as a college basketball fan, you've got to love March because you turn the calendar and the madness is there. And that's exactly what we have upon us with the two top teams in the WAC going at it back to back games. The edge, well, it belongs to Utah Valley after their 59 55 win last night. They've already claimed that title. However, GCU would be crowned co champion of the regular season if the Lopes rebound tonight with their ninth WAC win to match Utah Valley's top ranked 9 and 3 record. And with seeding implications on the line, scoreboard watching starts with New Mexico State, Seattle University, California Baptist all in action tonight as well. So now that we have set the stage, let's bring in our supporting cast, Barry Butel, Scott Williams. They'll be carrying us along through all the action tonight. But of course, the stars of the show will be those suited up in the basketball uniforms. And guys, the Lopes really have a chance to go out there tonight and put an exclamation point on their season with a big finale finish. Yeah, we shall see. There aren't any other games after tonight. Scott, this is it. This is the regular season finale. Uh, a share of the WAC title is on the line. I don't think you can put any more importance on one game than you can tonight. No, this is it. It's for all the marbles, and the players know that. they got to leave it all on the line. I mean, Utah Valley we came in here last night, kind of slapped the Lopes in the face right in the very beginning, that first half. It oh, yeah. took the Lopes some time to recover, and they put on one heck of a ferocious run down the stretch to cut it to a two-point game. But they can't come out half-stepping out of that locker room tonight. they got to be ready to play from the opening tip. How about the scrappiness in the game last night? Yeah, you knew what Utah Valley came in here and they wanted to come away with a victory. They were mixing it up with the Lopes. Yeah, they really did. I mean, I think this they play the way their coach played in the NBA and the Mad Dog, Whoa. Mark Madsen. I mean, they played rough and tough. They weren't giving an inch, taking no quarters and asking for none. I, mean, I love that one right there. Take Cole down. and Labor getting into it and Cole Mean mugging and then the officials jump in there. Some other players get in there. I mean, but that's what it's all about when the game is on the line. You will just see those guys play with that raw energy, intensity, and emotion. Yeah, and we'll see what happens tonight. But how about last night? Let's talk about a few players. Alessandro Laver, senior night, 16 points, six boards in the game. Yeah, the big Italian stallion. When the team needed him the most, he put the team on his back. That was one of those nice footwork plays from the first half. He knocked down a three-point shot early on. The team fell down by 13 points, and that's when he was at his best. A big sideline out of bounds play here team down two possessions and he does a nice good job of putting that left shoulder right into the defense and, and cutting it down to a one possession game unfortunately Lopes just weren't able to pull that off but he was big down the stretch he couldn't need a big 40 minutes out of him tonight three for nine beyond the arc for Alessandro Laver first half for Oscar Freyer second half different story eight of his ten yeah, he was phenomenal in that second half. It came to the senior night. The guys were a little bit disjointed to start this game. A lot of emotions going into your, your final weekend at home. But with another player that stepped up and showed some senior leadership was Frere Cranon. A couple long distance jump shots using his wheels in transition. He got a big block shot down the stretch to deny an easy two points. So we'd like to say, when it comes to a situation like this, you throw out the X's and O's, it's time for the players to go out there and perform. Utah Valley, they have already secured a share of the Western Athletic Conference championship with a win last night. The big talk before the game was the two bigs, right? <laughs> AMAC against Midgard, but look who came to play. Trey Woodbury and Evan Cole for the Wolverines. Yeah, Cole was absolutely fantastic. He had a like a chip on his shoulder. He played with a moxie that yep. I hadn't seen out of him a whole lot this year. Inside, outside, power around the basket, mixing it up, throwing jump hooks with soft touch from 14 feet. And Woodbury was just too big, too strong for the Lopes defenders last night. Constantly attacking the basket, 
making running these guys off a series of screens. He's really good off the bounce, getting himself up and squared to the basket, knocking down outside shots. Gonna have to do a better job slowing those two in this ball game if they want to win. 16 for that man, Trey Woodbury. 20 for Evan Cole, the transfer from Georgia Tech. Well. We're setting the scene here. It's the season finale. A win for the Lopes. They've got a share of the Western Athletic Conference regular season title and perhaps that number one seed overall. What a one night and what the uh, story could change dramatically. Kate, down to you. You're absolutely right. A lot on the line, and I actually am reminded of when I was uh, growing up playing soccer. There was a dad on the sidelines during our big games who would yell, who wants it? And I feel like that was going through my mind of last night watching this game and then coming in tonight. So I turn it back to you guys and Scott, who do you want to see go out there? Who do you want to see wants it? Who sets that, who ignites that fire for the Lopes tonight? Well, it's not the coaching staff. I mean, the X's and O's are set. The guys know how to execute. It's the senior leadership. It's, it's the Blackshire as the point guard setting the tone on how they're going to play. More energy, more aggression, more intensity right from the very beginning. It's, it falls on the play. Players laps. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Midgard definitely needs to respond. Has to show a little bit more life than he did a night ago. Alessandro Labor, Oscar Freyer, it's got to be led by the seniors on this squad. They've got to push this team on to victory. Well, the good news is, guys, I can tell you prepped for your game and you want to have a good broadcast. So we'll check you out at the top of the hour. Thank you so much. And we still have lots more Lopes pregame show coming your way. We are setting the scene for one of the Lopes' biggest games ever here inside GCU Arena. So we're going to get the inside scoop with a Lopes insider right after this. Canyon University, a Christian university, is one of the largest and fastest growing universities in the country. GCU offers 270 dynamic academic programs with modern apartment style living, classrooms, labs, restaurants, and more. Located in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, GCU's vibrant community and expansive campus is ranked top 20 for best college campuses in America. My university integrates the free market system with a welcoming Christian worldview perspective into its academic programs and throughout campus life. So you can put your faith into action and help transform communities. GCU campus students received over $157 million in scholarships in 2020, and many students attend GCU for less than the cost of a state university. Visit gcu.edu slash my offer to see the scholarships you qualify for. Admissible high school seniors can schedule a free visit from anywhere in the country. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash my offer. Welcome back to the Lopes pregame show driven by Nissan. We're coming at you live here on Fox 10 Extra with a big game on hand for the Lopes who go up against the Wolverines. Game two of this matchup. Last night, it was Utah Valley who got the edge. They came out victorious 59-55. But tonight, the Lopes, they're still very much in this. There is a number one seed on the line for the tournament next week in Vegas, the WAC tournament. And there's also a share of the WAC title uh, out for grabs. So we'll see how this all plays out. But to get some inside scoop, if you will, we welcome in Lopes insider Paul Coro. And uh, Paul, I think, you know, you see the final score obviously did not go in the favor of the Lopes last night. However, they still were dependent on that defense. They were able to hold the Wolverines to 49% shooting. How has defense proven to be the key for the Lopes all season long, kind of their bread and butter? Yeah, I think no matter what happens with the hiatuses and the ups and downs of the offense, they're, they're hardwired for defense, and it's what they could always count on all season to be there for them. Like you mentioned, holding Utah Valley to 40% yesterday kind of gets lost in everything because that's a team that's a top 25 shooting team. And so I think, you know, tonight, if they continue to play that way, they give themselves another chance to win when the offense comes around. Right. That offense coming around. Defense <laughs> does win championships. However, you do still have to score more points than your opponent. That's your news flash for today. Yeah. So how do the Lopes um, go out there and make some adjustments after they saw what Utah Valley brought last night? 
Yeah, well, I think it's going to be two things. Obviously, the execution, uh, but that's, you know, sharp passing. We saw some really sloppy passing in the first half and just a little bit better movement. And then that started to happen late in the game last night. It was a little too late, but it started to happen. And then I think the other thing is the 50-50 balls. They were they were more like 80-20 balls last night. It, I mean, the ball was pinballing around, and it just seemed to always end up with the Wolverines. And Bryce Drew always talks about that the tougher team wins, and the tougher team gets those balls. And so if that swings the Lopes way, that's a lot more possessions, more shots, and a better chance to win. Yeah, and uh, you know, only a 24-hour turnaround to make those adjustments with this back-to-back -back schedule right now. So a lot comes into play here. The Lopes, uh, that was an emotional defeat last night. Meanwhile, Utah Valley, they got to celebrate last night. So what will you be looking for in these uh, first, you know, the first few minutes of this game playing out to see which team kind of is still bringing their all tonight? Yeah, I think the, the four Lopes that were participating in senior night last night, they'll probably have more composure tonight yeah. than last night. Emotions are such a big part of the game. And I think we saw that them get caught up in a little bit last night. And then on the flip side, the emotions are the other way for UVU. They went into their locker room last night and they had a little spray water bottle party celebrating, you know, clinching a co-championship. So how happy are they with what they've already achieved? Are they still motivated? There's a ton at stake tonight. You know, a co-championship for the Lopes and a good chance to be the number one seed for the tournament if some other things happen tonight, too. Yeah, we'll be scoreboard watching. There's obviously a lot on the line for the Lopes and the other WAC teams. Meanwhile, over on the women's side, a little bit clearer. Clearer. We know that Coach Molly Miller's team has the number three seed heading to the WAC tournament next week. What's going to be the key for them to succeed in uh, the WAC action next well, week? Well, we go right back to talking defense again because that's <laughs> what Molly Miller talks about all the time. They are they are a pressure defense team. They can do some things offensively. The freshman, uh, Katie Scott, and the other freshman, Tierra Brown, they've been the leading scorers for the team in conference play, but they also have those experienced seniors. You saw Nadeja Jackson step up last week on senior night and have one of her best games, but their bread and butter is that pressure defense. They're fourth in the nation right now for creating opponent turnovers, and they're, they put themselves in a situation where, we, you know, the Lopes could have two teams playing in WAC tournament championship games a week from today. They're that good. They took California Baptist, an undefeated team, to overtime. Uh, they split with Utah Valley, so they're very capable to do some of the same things. What's it say about both of these programs, the fact that in one year, when you didn't have a March Madness last year, you get new coaches for both programs, and then we're having this discussion right now where you're talking about a possible WAC championship at the tournament or the regular season for both of these squads as well. Yeah, it's amazing that both of them have implemented their culture into these programs and, and their styles. It's, you know, with limited games, that's really hard to do for coaches because the repetitions haven't been there to learn a new system and have it become inherent by this time of year. And so, you know, they don't have those players that have played in the system three, four years like these other teams have. And so to be in the point right now where they could still get to the NCAA tournament on both sides and maybe go to Indy, maybe go to San Antonio and be in those bubbles is pretty exciting for both squads. What do you think it is um, about both of those coaches, and specifically tonight, we're talking Coach Drew, um, that they have brought to these programs that the players have really bought in on what they're saying? Yeah, I think it's it's not just Bryce Drew and not just Molly Miller. They have experienced staffs right. that, that really have put in a lot of work with both these teams and showed a lot of personal care with player development. And whether it be a guy like Oscar Freyer there, who was out of the program last year and now has re-implemented himself and got back into a starting position and a graduating position is so great to see. And it shows their care for these guys beyond the court. And then a guy like Asby or Mickard has gone from being a non-player at Wichita State to one of the best players in the nation leading the nation field goal percentage. So, um, but you know, all these big guys and, and, and on the women's side too, it's such a, a quality program of people. And that's what Molly Miller and Bryce Drew both emphasize. They wanted to have character, high character recruits. They're gonna have high talent recruits. There's no doubt about that, but they want that to also have character to represent the university. Yeah, and I uh, know Coach Drew wants to see that character on display tonight from his Lopes with one of the biggest games they've dealt with all season long coming up here at the top of the hour. Paul Coro, thank you so much for joining us. And when we come back, we're going to discuss how fans have such an important role here at the game. We'll get into all the details when we come back. It's about you this next segment, so stay with us. How does a chicken sandwich become a Whataburger spicy chicken sandwich? Is it by slathering it in a fiery sauce or adding some crazy hot toppings? Nah. 
If the chicken in a chicken sandwich wants to be spicy, it has to come from the inside. By marinating it in spices, frying it up, then cooling it off with fresh veggies. All on a new brioche bun. Good thing flavor can come from within. Good thing there's the new limited time spicy chicken sandwich at Whataburger. As a kid, I always dreamed of being a Division I athlete. GCU supported that dream, and they also allowed me to get an education. So when I came to GCU, I was able to transfer enough credits in to fast track my education. So I graduated in three years with a master's, and I did it debt free because I had athletic and academic scholarships. I'm Mackenzie, and I earned my MBA from Grand Canyon University. There's a thunder in all of us. Come find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Welcome back to the Lopes pregame show driven by Nissan. It is a big one tonight inside GCU Arena. Not only the season finale to the regular season, but there is so much on the line for the Lopes who have a chance to be crowned tonight co-champion of the conference if they get the victory. We'll get to all of that, but first we want to welcome in now Vice President for Advancement, Kale Gober. Thank you so much for joining us. And Thanks I want to um, kind of dive into your role here with GCU. What exactly does your day-to-day -day entail and why did you see it's a good fit to come here to GCU? You were serving in the same role at the University of Central Arkansas before. Sure, yeah. Thanks, Kate. Uh, I, I think Brian Mueller uh, decided to add an advancement division a few years ago, and the timing of that coincided with our move back to our not-for-profit status, which we still are. Yeah. And so, uh, really, a division of advancement does a lot of things, but at its core, the main two missions are, number one, to serve and engage um, an alumni group of over 200,000 people nationwide. And then the second thing is to try to engage people to a point that they'll want to support our scholarships primarily. We do a lot of stuff, but really at its core, we're there to serve and engage an alumni base and then connect people's passion to our purpose, which primarily is scholarships. So then what role does the Lopes Club play with the Division of Advance? Yeah, so I guess in short, uh, Lopes Club is the most uh, exciting and, and beneficial way to support an incredible program. And, and I'll save that for last because the program is incredible. But the Lopes Club is a group of people that whenever you're a member, a lot of your benefits are activated here, here at basketball. And so, for example, um, I, I think the biggest thing would be as Coach Drew and Coach Miller continue to build their programs into being postseason teams year in and year out, access to postseason tickets. Our Lopes, members, Lopes Club members would get priority access. Here in, in a regular game day experience, uh, Helen Bleach and her team do an incredible job with the hospitality. So pre-game and during halftime, food, fellowship, beverages. And so that's another benefit. I, I think also access to our student athletes and our coaches. So I think one of the levels has uh, a dinner with head coaches. You also have uh, things like open practices and some road game experiences. We want people to see what they go through on a road game and how the discipline comes into play. On, on, a, on a road game and so those are some of the benefits uh, but the most exciting thing is what it supports and that's the students inspiring students scholarship program yes. and it's a scholarship program that was born out of a tutoring service that President Mueller saw a need for seven years ago which still exists today but that tutoring service has now rolled into a scholarship program and we've awarded more than 350 full tuition scholarships so, so it, the, the most incredible part about it Kate is that 95% of the students are students of color. 100% of them live below the poverty line. And last year, they were retained at a 95% rate. So these are students that just need a shot. And so in addition to getting great amenities and also like next year, we're gonna, we're gonna toy around with concession delivery. You're a part of the biggest party in college basketball. You don't wanna have to leave your seat. Let us bring your food to you. So we're constantly trying to hear ways that we can bring value to our Lopes Club members. And it supports an incredible cause in SIS. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's amazing um, what the university through these programs have been able to give back to the surrounding community. But in turn, how engaged have alumni been when they've seen what Coach Miller and what Coach Drew have been able to do for these programs, both teams gearing up for what should be a successful trip, you hope, in Vegas with the WAG tournaments coming up. Yeah, you know, I mentioned earlier, 200,000 alumni. This is an alumni based in the next decade is going to grow to over half a million. That could be a top five uh, alumni base in the country. And so whenever you think about what basketball, the role that it can play, 
If you become a regular in March, what it does is it creates a, a, a feeling where people want to be associated with that across the country. And so that association then rolls into advocacy. And when that happens, you have half a million advocates across the country that can tell the GCU story. They can trumpet what GCU is and what God is building here. And so for us, not only is it a top-notch education with world-class faculty, it's a student experience that's second to none, in large part because of our Division I athletics program right. under Jamie Bob leadership, but also it's not just an academic rigor that is that's going to prepare you for your career. It's it's infused with principles of Christian worldview and the free market system. And those are things that we think not only are going to transform our community, which it's already doing, but we think that that can stretch coast to coast. So when you have half a million advocates across the country yeah. feeding off of that excitement of a basketball program, that's where I think we can really thrive as an alumni department and as a division of advancement. Oh, great. And you guys are clearly doing so much for the community, having fun out there. I know you've had watch parties and next year we hope to see the return of even more fans in the stands. Kale, thank you so much for joining us here with some great information yeah. and we will continue to bring some stellar information your way as we get you set up for tonight's game. And who is the source of all knowledge? Coach Drew, that's right. He's with us right after this. Once you've been to hell and back, there's not much left to fear. When the boogeyman goes to sleep at night, he checks under his bed for me. Have you ever wondered who Waldo's hiding from? Me. Not even the cougars of LA are enough to scare me. But if I get into an accident, I'm calling the boss. Sweet James. If you've been hurt, don't back down. Call Sweet James. From reimagining the way you work, to reassessing what you need. You've changed the way you do business. And now, so have we. With no annual contracts and flexible internet and voice solutions, you'll have what you need to get back to business. Rethink, reconnect, reimagine. Switch to Cox Business today. Welcome back to the Lopes pregame show driven by Nissan Jerry Colangelo. Obviously a wonderful support here for the Lopes. Could it be pro more proud, I'm guessing, than G of GCU tonight going up for hopefully a co-championship? We'll see how this all turns out. But for tonight's game plan, Barry went straight to Coach Drew to get the information. Thanks, Kate. I'm alongside uh, Coach Drew. And uh, Coach, uh, wow, it was, a, it was a tough one last night. And you mentioned after the game it was an emotional loss. And those are hard to c come back from. Can you talk a little bit about how your team is going to respond here tonight? Well, we hopefully uh, we're going to respond better than what we played last night. You know, yeah. uh, Credit Utah Valley played really well, rebounded the basketball. At a high level, you know, they were just better than us. Um, they made shots, and we had the same shots on the other end, and we missed them. And so, uh, you know, tonight's going to be, you know, a lot of game about character. Um, a lot about toughness and uh, what response our team can have after, you know, a tough loss last night. You mentioned the, the toughness part, and that, that was kind of evident, you know, uh, watching the game and, and how they really battled after loose balls and really didn't give up on, on some of those rebounds. You know, we, we, we lost uh, loose balls 9-7, to seven, not like our team. We can't do that. Uh, 15 to 6 offensive rebounds. We're not going to win when we do that. And as we know, you know, offensively, we aren't the prettiest team in the country, so we have to get offensive rebounds. And on the other end, we have to keep them from offensive rebounding. Last night, we didn't do that. Let's talk about a, a few players. Alessandro Laver, he was honored on senior night last night. He responded with 16 points in the game and, and kind of came up, stepped up big late in the game. Uh, hit some big shots for us. You know, senior nights are difficult. You never know how it's going to go from a coaching standpoint, you know, with, with the emotion of playing your last, uh, you know, game games on the home floor. And, you know, Ali came out and, and made some shots early to keep us in the game. And, you know, we're going to need that today. They're really packing in the paint and we're going to need his outside shooting. So much talk going into the game was was the two bigs, right? The, the field goal shooting of, of Midgard against the rebounding of mm -hmm. AMAC. How did you see that matchup last night? You know, it was one of those nights. Uh, things bounced their way a lot, didn't bounce our way. You know, AMAC played a great game, hasn't attempted a three all year, and, you know, made his only three-point attempt. And, you know, just a lot of things went their way. You know, I, I look for Ash to be a lot more aggressive tonight and to go back to being the Asbjorn that we've seen all year. There, there seemed to be, at least on our front, so much talk about the, the big matchup. But mm -hmm. then you got a guy like Cole and, and Woodbury who definitely 
you know, they were heard from last night. You know, really good players. You know, uh, Evan Cole transferred from Georgia Tech, and, you know, he played like a high major player last night. You know, went one-on-one, -on -one, made threes, uh, finished above the rim. And so, you know, we're going to have to defend him, defend him one-on-one -on -one, uh, much better than what we did last night. Sean Miller Moore, he, uh, he, was, he played a really gutsy performance, took that uh, hip and that thigh area and went to the trainer's table and you got him back into the game pretty quickly. You know, he was one of our bright spots early. You know, was really aggressive in transition. And once he got that knee, you know, contusions, a deep uh, thigh bruise, you know, he just, he, he wasn't moving the same. So, you know, he's going to give it a go today. Hopefully he's going to be able to uh, give us, you know, quality minutes like he's been doing all year. Last night we talked about the guard play. Mikey Dixon, Blackshire, how did you feel that those two guys stepped up last night? Ten points for Dixon. You know, I thought Javon really moved the ball well. Nine assists, no turnovers was excellent. You know, um, we have to still space the floor better. You know, we need to know where our areas are on the floor and get to those areas. Seattle, second half, we did that. You know, last night we did not do that. And, and again, that's been something we've been predicating all year. Hopefully tonight we'll get to the right spots on the perimeter and we'll shoot when we're open. You mentioned the last 10 minutes of the game last night and the ball movement. You liked how, what you saw the last 10 minutes of the game. You hope that it carries over here tonight. What did you like about that, those last 10 minutes? You know, a big thing is we play with urgency. You know, we didn't play with urgency the first 30 minutes. And, and you know, I, again, this is new for this team to be in this moment, you know, to have a really meaningful game and, and kind of have some pressure on your shoulders. And we did not respond well for 30 minutes. It, it's a growing process. Hopefully they learn from last night. Hopefully we'll come out and play with a lot more poise and a lot more freedom than what we played last night. You put Liam Lloyd in the lineup as well. It was a kind of a, a spark plug, or was he a guy that stepped in there when Sean Miller Moore won? You know, we were struggling. You know, our, our, our bench... Uh, uh, really struggled last night and we need them to play well and thought Liam came in gave us some energy right away made a really nice pass uh, had an open three that almost went down but you know we like the energy he brings and we thought at that time we needed some energy off the bench. Well as you close out the season here obviously it has been a successful season you want things to improve obviously as you head to Las Vegas but all in all the, the end of a, a regular season comes to a close tonight. Can you kind of encapsulate it? Well, it's been the wackiest year ever. <laughs> no doubt. Um, you know, I'm still sitting here. We're playing a back-to-back. -back, and, you know, hopefully this is the last back-to-back -back we ever have to play, <laughs> you know, in league play like this. But, um, boy, what a wild year. Yes. Um, you know, I, I want to say we did some numbers today. It was like 1,400 COVID tests our team has done. I mean, wow. it, it's, it's just wild in, in the 17-day, 19-day layoff. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we're here. We have a lot to play for uh, tonight and beyond. And so a great opportunity for us. All right. Good luck, Coach. Thanks. Head coach Bryce Drew, Kate, we'll send it back over to you. All right, thank you very much. Well, just like Coach Drew said, you gotta have urgency for tonight's game. There's a lot on the line. So we're gonna take a quick break, come wrap things up and get you to tip off. At Tire Pros, we know your time is valuable. And spending time with family and friends is what really matters. Our customers are the core of our business. That's why we make buying tires and auto service hassle-free. Our certified technicians will keep your car running smoothly. So you can spend your time the way that you want. Find a convenient location near you at tireprosofarizona.com. Hassle-free guarantee. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. Welcome back to the Lopes final regular season game of the year. Right now, the Lopes going up against Utah Valley. Last night, the Wolverines were victorious. They have at least a share in the WAC title. But the Lopes could be crowned co-champions tonight right here on Fox 10 Extra. All they have to do is go out there and win. Can they do it? Time will tell right on the other side of this. Going got tough, many people bunkered down. Dealerships turned to mundane sales online with impersonal deliveries, not Sanderson Ford. We chose to work even harder and provide more personalized service and value in our showroom. Or you can shop from home, buy from home, and we'll deliver. We've been delivering vehicles to our customers for over 65 years. Call Luis Gonzalez. Hey David, I'm just pulling in with your new truck. 
Wow, I'm blown away. Thanks for the personalized service. When I think back on graduation day, it's such a special moment. Walking across the stage, hearing your name called. I think I would really regret not walking. I think being able to finish out a long college experience with an awesome moment like graduation is really special. If I hadn't decided to walk that day, I think I'd regret not having that sense of closure and accomplishment for that huge chapter in my life. My name's Noah and I graduated in 2015. My name is Lauren and I graduated in 2016. Perf Jones, by your side. Live from the heart and soul of Phoenix, welcome to the campus of Grand Canyon University, where Herb Jones presents tonight's regular season finale between the Lopes and the Utah Valley Wolverines. Good evening and welcome to GCU Basketball. Alongside three-time NBA champion Scott Williams, I'm Barry Butel. Kate Longworth will be along in just a moment. Well, it gets down to this, the regular season finale, a Lopes victory, and they have a share of the WAC title. This is it. I mean, go out there and compete. You heard from Coach Drew in the pregame show. It's all about who wants it the most at this point in time in the season. Well, who's going to lead the charge? Will it be Alessandro Labor for the Lopes? Last night, 16 points and six rebounds. He was really good when the team needed him most down the stretch. The team had fallen behind by 13 points. The big Italian seven-footer put the team on his back, knocking down outside shots. A good put inside. Love this one right here. Coming off a staggered screen. The team needed a basket. He found a way to put it in the hole. And for the Wolverines, how about the 6'10 grad transfer from Georgia Tech with 20 points, Evan Cole. Evan, all the eyes were on AMAC. It was Cole who was the star big man for the Wolverines last night. Did a variety of different ways, inside, outside, offensive glass, mixing it up. He was the one that really set the tone for how the Wolverines were going to be more aggressive than the Lopes. Trey Woodbury as well with 16 points for the Wolverines who have already shared secured a share of the WAC regular season title. Now, tonight, it's up to the Lopes to share it. We shall see. It's time to get things started here at GCU Arena. Let's send it down to the public address announcer, Paul Denuser, with our opening prayer. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to the beautiful GCU Arena for tonight's Western Athletic Conference men's basketball matchup between the Wolverines of Utah Valley University. And your Grand Canyon University Antelopes. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you all please rise if you are able. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this evening's competition with the word of prayer. Tonight's prayer is led by Savannah Neat, a fourth year member of the GCU Dancers, majoring in behavioral health science. Let's pray. Dear God, I first off wanna just thank you for bringing us all together tonight safely in this arena to watch these two teams compete and to most importantly celebrate just the accomplishments of every senior here, God. Um, I pray that you hold a hand of protection over every athlete tonight and that everything done on this court is done for your glory. I say these things in your son's name, amen. Thank you, Savannah. And now let's meet the starting lineups for tonight's contest. First of all, for the Wolverines, the Utah Valley Wolverines, 11 and 9, 9 and 3 in the Western Athletic Conference. Their head coach in his second season is Mark Madsen. Here is Coach Madsen, Madsen's starting five, brought to you by Talking Stick Resort. Blaze Neal, Trey Woodbury, Jamison Overton, Evan Cole, and Fardaz Amak. Yeah, we're going to keep our eye on Jamison Overton, 6'6", 190 pound guard from San Diego, California. His senior leadership's gonna be imprinted all over this Wolverines basketball club tonight. And KYP, Lopes gotta realize this kid is left-handed. Play him for the strong left-hand dribble drive and, and stay in front of him without fouling his jump shot. Now it's time to introduce you to GCU.
Here is head coach Bryce Drew starting five. Brought to you by Talking Stick Resort, Javon Blackshear Jr., Mikey Dixon, Oscar Freyer, Alessandro Labor, and Asbjorn Midgard. Yeah, we'll be watching Oscar Freyer. The senior's going to have a tough assignment tonight on J.J. Overton, but he was absolutely sensational in the second half of that basketball game last night. Eight of his ten came late in the game when the Lopes needed it the most. The assistant coaches, Jamal Walker, Ed Schilling, and Casey Shaw. Director of player development is Ryan Lightfoot. Director of recruiting, A.C. Moye Kobo. Director of video operations, Peyton Prudhomme. Strength and conditioning coaches, Jordan Jackson. And the athletic trainer is Jordy Hackett. Loves 14 and 6, 8 and 3 in the whack, 9 and 3 here at GCU Arena. Coming off a four point loss to the Wolverines last night. Time for our Sanderson Ford keys to the game. Yeah, boardroom. I mean, offense is pretty, defense wins games, but it's rebounding that wins championships. Last night, Lopes out rebounded 45 32. They got a rebound like admin tonight. And think inside the box. Points in the paint are at a premium tonight. I know Coach Drew likes his team to shoot when they are open from the outside, but think inside out basketball tonight will be a huge key. And hey, Kate, who wants it? Who? Uh, you know, there's no more exit in Owen. It's all about who wants to go out there, step up with some fire and set a tone. Which player from that Lopes basketball team is really going to be showing that? Leadership tonight to propel this team to the first ever WAC championship title. The Havocs are out in full force. This is it. The regular season finale before, before these two teams get opening round buys at the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas at the Western Athletic Conference Tournament. Who's gonna be the top seed? Who's gonna be the second seed? Your officials are Frank Harvey, Brad Fowler, and Ryan McDaniel. Midgard and Cole to tip it off here in Phoenix. We are underway, Lopes in possession. Dixon leaves for Blackshear. Far side, Freyer inside. Quick ball movement. Dixon. Back to Blackshear. Moves left. Labor. Open look. Not there. Woodbury with the rebound. Well, Lopes went inside, got a ball into Labor. He kicked out the black, uh, excuse me, to, to Dixon, but he wasn't ready to shoot. So they end up with an outside shot. Labor taking a long shot from the perimeter. Cole looks for long distance. Gets it. How good is this kid been? It was wonderful last night, stroking it from outside. He mixed up the inside game. He got on the offensive blast. He had power around the basket. And then tonight comes out, set the tone once again for the Wolverines, strokes that three. Bitgar, top of the key, up over the top. Oh my, deja vu happening here early. Yeah, well, we had some you know, poor precision passing. On Friday night, early on, I don't know how good this uh, looks. They really want Midgar throwing that alley oop. Pull off the mark. Freyer. This little looks got to be good transition. Here we go. Freyer had three, three turnovers a night ago. He picks up one here early. Looks about Dixon was going to cut to the basket. Dixon kind of just came flat along the, right. the, the sideline. Normally, when you hit the free throw line, you make a 90 degree to the corner of the basket. And I think that's what uh, Frere was banking on, and, and the ball just sailed out of bounds. Field. Amen. Woodbury cuts in. Back. Amen. We're going to move on. Midgard. Big right hand off the glass. Oh, so good footwork by the 245 pounder. Shuffling those biscuits down there on that block. Right to Blackshear, Wolverines with a 5-0 early lead. Freyer rotates, top of the key, a little floater, good, the Lopes are on the board. That's Lopes basketball right there, a little screen for Midgard, I shouldn't say little, not a little about Midgard, but get that defender free up Freyer for a better look right at the free throw line. He leaves it for Overton, Amac. And it back to me. 
Cole quickly to Woodbury, near side. He'll cut in, stops, pops. Good. Well, pick a page right out of that GCU playbook. Same thing, little side pick and roll. Woodbury, we talked about him being so good off the bounce with the basketball, being able to get himself back on bounce. Labor over to Frayer, near side. Gets it quickly to Blackshire, far side. Looks down inside, mid guard, top of the key again. Too heavy, rebound. Battled after and picked up by Amac. Yeah, I think Labor got pushed in the back. He had Labor and Frere battling that ball for that basketball. It kind of messed both of them up. Over to back to Cole. Touch down low, nobody home. Neal. Blackshire almost got a hand on it. Back to Cole. Eight on the shot clock. Cole's looking to move. Stopped by Midgard. Step back. Cole is on fire again. <laughs> he looks like Larry Bird out the way he's shooting these balls. Calling that shot. one was coming down into the shot clock was about to expire. And you can play great defense, but if a guy's got a hot hand, you can just pat him on the back. Blackshire in the mid guard. Man, a sea of green, a foul called against the Wolverines. Yeah, Amac went down hard on that one, trying to steal that basketball. It's like running on a running around a redwood, but this one here by Cole just. Realizing the shot clock was under five, he realized, hey, got to get something out quick. And it was a nice job getting back to that baseline, creating some space from the defender. Got a little bit of better look at the rim. Nick Gard at the line. Overton picks up his first personal foul. And Nick Gard's been a good free throw shooter in conference play and wasn't able to get that front end of that one down. You see his numbers last night, eight points and, and six boards. I mean, those aren't bad numbers, but... It's just some of his shots where he had Amac in a bad way. I want to see him go up into the chest of Amac rather than trying to get a clean look at a jump hook, from, you know, moving away from the basket. Power that ball to the basket. Hopefully, he shot three free throws last night. A little floater for Overton. Yeah, that's tough on JJ Overton. You get left handed. He wants to get back to that left hand. So even if he starts right, He's trying to get back to that left hand. Right now, the Wolverines on fire. Looks not showing much defense. Five of six shooting early for the Wolverines. Oh, turnover mid guard. He is a foul. Yeah, yep. that good. Referee got a little bit late, but you can see that. Arm came down across the left forearm of mid guards, and that's going to be Woodbury's first. McMillan comes into the game looking to rebound after. Uh, Having his issues last night. James. Yeah, I mean, speaking of, he was a little loose with that basketball. I mean, hey, that's why that's why you love to play sometimes in back-to-back situations. Look at that. Oh, Midgard. what a move on Amac by Midgard goes left hand. Now that's what you want to see the big fella do. And, and just truck that ball to the basket. Whitberry looking to drive. Stop. Push back out. Pull. Looks for three. Shoot. Pulled down by Freyer. Lopes looking at Whip the momentum. Stop, pop, doesn't go. Good job by Ollie Labor working the glass. I think they picked up a foul on Amac. It's time to get away. It's time to escape. It's a new day to play. Your retreat awaits at Talking Stick Resort. Indulge your appetite for excitement with our thrilling table games, our electrifying slots, our outstanding restaurants, and our exceptional accommodations. It's all waiting for you. It's a new day to play at Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. When the going got tough, many people bunkered down. Dealerships turned to mundane sales online with impersonal deliveries, not Sanderson Ford. We chose to work even harder and provide more personalized service and value in our showroom. Or you can shop from home, buy from home, and we'll deliver. We've been delivering vehicles to our customers for over 65 years. Call Luis Gonzalez. Hey David, I'm just pulling in with your new truck. Wow, I'm blown away. Thanks for the personalized service. GCU basketball is brought to you in part by Sanderson Ford. The best play on a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. By Herp Jones, by your side. By Community Tire Pros, celebrating 30 years keeping vehicles safe. And by Talking Stick Resort, play in style. 
Beautiful evening in Phoenix, Arizona. Barry Butel, Scott Williams, and send it down to Kate Longworth. Well, guys, what a year it has been. I think it's safe to say no one could have anticipated or prepared for what we have gone through. Hard to imagine that just 12 months ago, the loaf season came to a screeching halt when it was announced over the speakers at Orleans Arena that all games were canceled due to COVID-19. March Madness became sadness with no end in sight. The only thing that became certain was that everything was changing into a new head coach for the Lopes. She CU hired Bryce Drew March 17th. He met his players for the first time online, holding Zoom meetings versus practices. And then the season, it was up in the air for months, pushed back for weeks. It started, it stopped routinely. Masks were added to uniforms. Safety protocol became a part of the nightly game plan. Plans had to, or the players rather, had to navigate through so much, showing toughness and character. And that toughness and character is what Drew said he wants to see from his team tonight. He believes if they can show that, they can sit back at the end of all this and appreciate what they've accomplished, which, if it's a victory tonight, could be a co-championship in the WAC. No doubt about it. A crazy season for every team, though. Yeah, every team's had some issues. I mean, Lopes really had it going on, and then all of a sudden a 17-day stoppage has wrecked their momentum. And um, they're trying to find their stride, but right now they, come, they call a timeout, and they've been so good early in the season executing out of timeouts last, like that. And then you get the ball right where you want it to Midgard, and he walked. So it, it's just been a kind of a funky in these final six games. And the team hasn't really been able to put together their – same sort of momentum that they had from the first half of the season. Oh, wow. There's one more time. Oscar Frere trying to move his feet on J.J. Overton. And that's what I was trying to say. That Overton always trying to get back to that left hand. I don't know what Oscar Frere can do on that one. Wow. It seemed like he gave him his chest the entire time. Wow. Overton drove right into his leg. I love it when the official that's standing like three feet away isn't the one that makes the call. Big right hand by Amac. That was a beautiful little jump hook by Amac. Gave a couple little shoulders, softened up the defense, and he comes back with a strong right hand hook. Blackshire, stop, pop. Doesn't go. Now Blackshire's got to make that shot. That's yeah. a good pick there and get him a little a shot right in front of the basket from 10 feet. Look at that pressure. Putting that pressure on Overton causes a turnover. And that's Lopez basketball right there. Get after those ball handlers, causing them to make some tough decisions on the floor. McLaughlin in for Midgard. Saw Coach Madsen in his second season, the two-time NBA champ with the Lakers, a former Lakers assistant, coach for six seasons, and a member of the Stanford Athletics Hall of Fame. Nice true. Also a former NBA player as well. Labor. McMillan pushes out. Sean Miller Moore looks like he's got a little bit of pep in his step. Great to see that. Labor dishes out. No look. Miller Moore five on the shot clock. Back out. McMillan two on the shot clock. Got to put it up. Blackshirt. Shot clock violation. Well, great ball movement by the Lopes on that possession. However, better defense for the Wolverines really stayed in front of the Lopes defenders. Even the ball went inside, there was no panic. They were able to close back outside the shooters, run them off their shots. Seemed like a few guys had some open looks to put it in. Up. Overton. Cole. Darthur. Turnaround call off the mark. McLaughlin boxes out. Yeah, nice job putting a body on a body, making sure if you don't get it, your guy that you're boxing out doesn't get it. Blackshirt to Labor. Labor cuts in. Moves into the paint. Guy walks. Man, oh man. Just lost his balance, slid that pivot foot. They're trying hard to get that ball inside. And between Midgard and, and, and Labor now, a couple costly turnovers. You missed an easy shot by a black shear and then the 24 excuse me the 30 second shot clock violation so uh, Lopes had some momentum they got the little five point run there 5-0 run but then they weren't able to do anything else with it now you got a legal screen on the weak side by Cole. Cole team's a little nervous. <laughs>
purpose here. Dixon came in for Blackshear. Yeah, they're putting Mill um, McMillan at the point. He's going to be the point guard of the future one day. Show what he can do. He's got a better, better show. And, he, and that's what I was starting to say. He, he can't wait to play this game as bad as he played yesterday. He wants to get that bad taste out of his mouth. Overton doesn't put it home. Sean Miller Moore is fouled after he turned the ball over. Yeah, I think they got that foul out towards the, the letters uh, at midcourt. I don't believe that's going to be a shooting foul. I believe they're going to say that's going to be side out of bounds. Chris was chatting it over. Looks like they credited Neal with the uh, personal foul. Cole, Neal, Overton, and Woodbury each with one. Five early turnovers for the Lopes. Two of seven from the field. Someone's got to take the ball in. <laughs> you got five green shirts out of there. Nobody wants to come over and get the ball and inbound the ball. And finally, Overton jogs over and says, I'll do it. Inbound Fuller. Arizona native, Highland High School, transfer from Weaver State, and turned the ball over to the Wolverines. Dixon that poked that thing away. Dixon stops, drives, floater, in and out. A little off balance shot, high percentage, not very high at all. It's almost like they, he kind of ran into his own teammate down there and caused a, a tougher shot. Off of the glass for Neal. That was beautiful. Uh, he went full speed down to that right block and just showed a little ball fake and got the defender to bite. Goloth in the near side, Sean Miller Moore. Drives. Gathered it up, put it in off the glass. Well, he, he had a lot of pep in his step last night until he tucked that shot to the thigh. It's good to see him moving well out here in the early stages of this game because they're going to need his energy. Lawson, McMillan, Miller Moore, those are three guys that you're going to need to get some production from. Overton puts the ball moving in the corner. In and out. Darthur. Quickly, Sean Miller Moore drives into the paint. Off the window and in, Sean Miller Moore. Yeah, Sean Miller Moore, he's just showing off right now. <laughs> That's that Pac 12 basketball right there. Get out and go, gets that ball in the wing and think, attack the basket. Lopes ball back into a little zone defense after the last two made field goals. Overton. Ball for the foul, Sean Miller-Moore is second. That's what you get from being aggressive right into your livery room for two. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. Well, you can see here the cutouts of a very special group of individuals. These loyal supporters took part in the Seats into Scholarships program. They donated at least $100 to the Students Inspiring Student Scholarship Program, an initiative that under President Mueller's leadership is transforming our local neighborhood. If you're watching this and want to learn more about this initiative or to support it, please visit giving.gcu.edu. Thank all of the loyal supporters of GCU. Last foul was on Mikey Dixon, not Sean Miller. 
Yeah. Moore with four points, two of two from the field in just five minutes. Yeah, Hopes are trying to pick it up defensively. Wolverine started five of six from the field. This is since two of five since that. Seven for 11, still shooting a high percentage. Grand Canyon, four of 10. However, they haven't got an assist yet. So they're doing a lot of things kind of one on one. Inbound quick to Fuller from Woodbury. Oops. Got a break there. I got four purple jerseys on that class. They got out rebounded on the offensive end, 15 to six last night. I know that really chapped Coach Drew and his staff. And what emphasis on these guys to get on your defensive glass. McMillan for three, off the mark. Looking get on for your chance. Offensive glass too. Yep. Midgard working the offensive glass. Nice move by Midgard of around Amac. The big fella. Leading the nation in field goal percentage at almost 75 percent a game decided I'm not going to be falling away from the basket I'm taking it hard to the rim two offensive rebounds for the Lopes none for Utah Valley Four-point game Amac, top of the key Looking for somebody finds Overton stops pops not going to happen Big rebound, McMillan in the midguard. Nice job by Chance. How did he get to that basketball? Total effort laying out. Yes, I, first I was thinking, don't save it underneath your own basket, but he got right to his big felt. Sean Miller Moore, shut down by Woodbury. Midguard leaves it back. Quick, McLaughlin. Chance, McMillan. Step back, McLaughlin. Looking to drive. Push back out, McMillan. Floater, not going to be happening, and bounces around, and Fuller picks it up. Took it a little too deep amongst the trees and wasn't able to elevate over the top of that big, tall inside lineup. Woodbury. The drive is 241 and counting for Utah Valley as the Lopes try to get back into the game on a 6-0 run. Did it stop? Yes. Overton drains it. Well, you got to get up and play that guy, flash into the middle, make him catch that ball and win it. Uh, wheeling and throwing back out guy like Overton He's always thinking to attack the basket and knocks that one in leading score for the Wolverines this year Time out on the floor 955 to go opening half the lead is six for Utah Valley Really yeah, but now the looks are in, in the game right, They started out again a little sluggish to start this basketball game now. They're engaged They find themselves down six with the ball just under did the play starting to kick up to pick it up for every three-point shot that GCU makes, Copper State Credit Union will be making a donation to the Students Inspiring Student Scholarship. For more information, please go to giving.gcu.edu. Well, the energy yet again back here at his student body. Yeah, I think McLaughlin's come in. He's giving them some good energy getting on that glass. And of course, we talk about Miller Moore almost every game. The pep in his step, and then Nick Miller much better tonight. Seems like he's playing under more control. In fact, the coaching staff ever gave him the keys to the bus for a short period of time. They were able to sit Blackshear down, settle him down, and McMillan did a nice job. Now he's back on the pine, and he get Blackshear back in this game. Flavor at the scores table. Prior to inbound. Back to Blackshear. 1-3-1 zone defense really extending it far out behind the three-point line coming out of that timeout so mixing it up Dixon to Blackshear in the corner Ooh, yeah! What in the world that ball just had a small siesta on the rim before it decided it wanted to fall into the basket I don't know if I've ever seen a ball hang on the rim so long before falling in 9-2-1 GCU, Woodbury, far side, Layson, Layson for three, off the mark, coming up and grabbing it is Dixon. Oh, I'll tell you what, they are gang rebounding, everybody going to the glass. Back out, McLaughlin, for three! Are you kidding me? We're oh. tied! Well, you penetrate, you get that ball down below the foul line, throw it all the way down to the the eye in Arizona and then come back and throw it to McLaughlin. I'm sitting there going, no, 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 yes, yes, yes. <laughs> because you haven't made, that was the first three the Lopes had this tonight. Gabe, hey, one of 11 from the arc, and that was a big one. Hey, Mac, driving, right hand, not gonna happen. Freyer on the run. He's a blur. 
Back out, mid guard, far side, Blackshear. Look at him move. Dishes back out, mid guard. Not there. Oh, but Freyer is. Dixon, back to Freyer. Inside, McLaughlin. Look at Gabe. Hoop and a hard. Lopes are in the lead. What exciting basketball. They're playing with energy and passion. I love this one by McLaughlin. i tell you what, that's why I like to say McLaughlin eat down there on that block. But look at this one by Blackshirt. Hey, can we put a stopwatch on this ball here? 1,001, 1,002. <laughs> i tell you what, then he falls back in. Nice spurt here by the Lopes coming out of that last timeout. Ropes bench, 9-0 run, 10-0 now. A 15-2 run for GCU. Yeah, Madsen right now, I tell you what, if he didn't get a bucket this time, he's going to need a timeout because it's been, the momentum has turned in his basketball game, and the Lopes are taking advantage. Oh, quick ball movement, Lafeson from the corner, off the mark, Laver. No green jerseys on the offensive glass. Well, mid guard underneath. And he puts it home. I'm not sure what Mad Dog's doing. He needs a timeout to get his team under control. All they're doing is firing from the outside. And they're giving up easy buckets underneath. Darthur, Woodbury, Lafeson. He tries again for three. He hits this one. Well, he knows his team better than I do, apparently. Oh, He's to let him keep shooting it from the outside. Works up by two. Lockshire, mid guard. Lockshire, cutting in. Underneath, mid guard, behind him. Aaron toss, but Lockshire was surrounded. And I almost want to drop that one for the big guy so he can pick it up coming up off the bounce. Makes it a little easier for him to catch up to the ball. What a battle here in Phoenix. Amac leaves it for Darthur. Step back. Big shots Man, right there. Like he was pushing right. off. That's Man, what Royce Cruz came saying. out a little bit. That right arm came out to drift some space. Knocked down that shot. So after the Lopes go on a 10-0 run, Wolverines come back with a 5-0 run themselves. Dixon for three! This place is going bananas right now. It seems like the basket's as big as a hula hoop. Inside, outside, doesn't matter. Lopes are draining these shots. Woodbury, he steps back. Too heavy. Player with the rebound. Well, if you can, if they can rebound, they can run. Blackshirt drives off the window. Nice job by Blackshirt. He just kept his time alive. Utah Valley. Well, that's Lopes basketball right there. Rebound to basketball. Get out and transition and run. 27-22, a five-point lead after the Lopes trailing a deep hole early on. They have definitely responded here tonight. You gotta like that. Go on a 10-0 run and then uh, get the crowd back into this basketball game. Wolverines come down and hit a couple shots, but you don't get rattled. You come right back and you get two more field goals. So now we got ourselves a ball game now. This place feels good. Let's go into the 30s. Let's begin with 33 first. That's Asborn Midgard. Well, he was a little shy last night, I think, playing against AMAC. And tonight he is not going to be denied. He's being very aggressive and going to the basket. Power moves, good footwork, and uh, just doing a, a number on the, the big fella right now, Amax seems off balance, and then McLaughlin comes in, gets some good offensive rebounds. Then I love this one right here. No hesitation whatsoever, even though I was sitting here with my teeth clenched <laughs> on the shot. And then I love this one right here, a little up and under, gets the hoop and the hard. Bench has been fantastic. 10-0 bench points. Again, if GCU wins, they get a share of the WAC regular season title. If they lose, they secure second place and a number two seed. Right now, they have gone on a 22-7 run after falling by, down by 10 at 15 to five to the Wolverines. Let's start playing better defense, keeping guys in front of them, not letting get beat off the dribble drive, not giving up easy shots. Then they have opportunity to rebound those balls. 13 to six advantage right now, Barry on the glass just by the looks, making it one and done, doing a much better job rebounding their own defensive board. 
Phillies, four of their last four. Now this turned quickly. I mean, it looked like the Wolverines were going to boat race them. They jumped out to that 10 point advantage, 15 to 5. And the Lopes come storming back, like you said, with that 22 to 7 run. And Got the momentum here with 6-12 to play. Can they hold the momentum and take it to the locker room? Now that's the thing we'll have to see. See how both of these teams respond after. Madsen called the timeout. Approaching six minutes to go, opening half. Cole. Quest turn, fade away. Short. Dixon grabs it. Yeah. Three jerseys every time. Three, four purple jerseys on the defensive glass. Fire for three. That's short off the mark. Right one and left his hand. Starts with leads for Woodbury. Like he court. didn't catch it well. Like, he yeah, didn't right. have it like really in the palm of his not in the palm of his hand, but in his fingertips the way he would have liked it. That's the fourth team foul uh, on Dixon. I mean, Dixon's trying to play good defense, you know, some 30 feet from the basket, but sometimes I think the officials just, they need to blow themselves and they blow, they blow the whistle like, hey, I need a breather. Back in the ball game for the Lopes, number two, Jack McMillan. Officials are really on that Lopes bench. Yeah, they're fired up. They're all stand. They're all stand. It's like they're, they're trying to play defense on the, the left side of that corner there. Overton with a nice baseline. Yeah, Overton. Overton. Play him left to go left. He, he wants to go left on 90% of every play. Stop him from going left. Make him go right. He has a tougher time finishing. He's already got the six points he had a night ago. That's off the mark. Yeah. That timeout was good yeah, by Mark Madsen. He yep. called timeout. Next thing you know, the Lopes come out with two poor three-point shots. Nobody on the glass to get any rebounds, and now Utah Valley has a chance to cut into that three-point deficit. Coach Drew puts McLaughlin back out there to hopefully get a spark back. Mittgard takes a seat. Five minutes to go. Opening half. Woodbury, Emac. Putting a body on AMAC, right hand, and it drops. Yeah, just giving up too many kilos down there, about a 20, point, a 20 pound size disadvantage for McLaughlin. You gotta come over and help a guy out. You can't let it, you see your smaller teammate getting back down that far in the basket before you decide I'm gonna have to come off one of these shooters and provide some help. You can make down 80% of those little jump hooks from seven, six feet from the basket. Blackshear, bounce pass. No one puts it on the floor. Careful, Freya. Seven on the shot clock. He's got to move. Frey, top of the key. Stops. Pops. Good! That's the Oscar Frey we know right there. That's that get on balance, probe the defense, one more probe dribble, and then pull up for that jumper. He's got four points and five boards. Three-point lead, GCU. Yeah, they got McLaughlin and AMAC. Now, McLaughlin was trying to do his work a little earlier this time. So yeah. You're not just going to back me right up underneath the basket two times in a row. I want to go ahead and, and get two arms in your back and not let that happen. No, no problem, though. Just a 15 foul on the Lopes. Baseline out of bounds. It's better than giving up an easy two points. That's what you're out for the four year. He's out there to use all five of his fouls in this game. Got low. He's trying to get that center grab down there to AMAC. He might be giving up 25 pounds to AMAC. Good to see Coach Drew getting in with the officials. We saw the Utah Valley bench pretty active in the coaching staff a night ago. Amac working on McLaughlin. Right hand doesn't go. See, that's that's what Frere coming over and yeah. digging in there and just throw Amac off this game just enough. Labor quickly. McMillan. Back to Labor. Labor for three. Oh. God! Yeah, we had that one lined right. up. That was the perfect uh, line for our, our line of sight here. I love that pick and pop game of Labor. Lopes hitting on all cylinders now. Neal. Back up top. Overton far side. I by Freya. Overton looking for some room. Blackshire got a hand on it. McLaughlin picks it up to Blackshire. Javon weaving his way around. Careful. Overton getting a hand in there. Freya. McMillan. McLaughlin. Baseline in the paint. Careful. Labor able to pick it up. 
Laver trying to find some room. It's possession out of bounds. Ten on the shot clock. 3-0-3 to go. The Lopes have erupted here to take the lead. Now Oscar Frere with the jump shot. And I love this pick and pop by the number two all-time score in GCU history. I'm personal injury attorney James Bergener. Accidents can happen. If something happens to you or your family, call me. My firm and I will take you by the hand and guide you through everything. You see, personal injuries are just that. They're personal. You're not a number. You're more than just a name. This is your life. At my firm, each case is professionally and personally tailored to you. So if you've been injured, I've got your back. Call me now for a free consultation. I would say to anybody considering maybe skipping graduation to spend a long time thinking about participating. I think it's a great opportunity to really take advantage of a moment that you only get once in your life. It, it's an opportunity to really experience something that highlights all the hard work that you've put in. Not very many people get to experience that in their life. It's such an honor and a privilege to be able to do that and I think the memories that come out of that are just incredible. Herf Jones, by your side. It may be limited capacity, but it's a full-on party here at GCU Arena. The Lopes has taken the lead 32 over the Wolverines with three to go in the first half. And as we take a look at the USAA athletic calendar, men's golf in action at the Bandon Dunes Championship tomorrow. Meanwhile, baseball will try to avoid the sweep at Oklahoma State. They did rally back in the ninth, but fell short today. Softball finishes series with Northern Illinois. And women's volleyball starts off the school week at California. Baptist. And coming up at the break, I'll have a chance to talk with Coach Drew as he walks off the court to get his thoughts on the energy his team is displaying so far here in the first half. Plus, at the break, we'll break down uh, the play we've seen and some stats, plus get to know these players just a little bit better. And guys, from my vantage point right here, I'm just above uh, the bench for the Lopes. And it's been great to see uh, as the bench has gone on the court and sparked a little bit of fire for these Lopes. Coach Drew motioned to the players who are currently on the bench, some of those starters, saying, get up, get on your feet, be a part of this action, and you're definitely seeing that emotion carry over to this game. Oh, Woodbury, though, Kate, pick that inbound off. Coming out of the break, Sean Miller Moore on that stationary bike. We'll keep an eye on him. Yeah, don't want that thigh to uh, bruise to tighten up when he gets on, on that bench. Keep it moving. Woodbury, it's a factor a night ago. Both again in that zone defense. Got to guard that middle. Watch the guy flash into the middle against that zone deep. They have the core. Core. Shot clock violation. How about wow. that? Shut it down. Well, you know, sometimes when, you, when the, the coaching staff draws up a play to come out out of the timeout to execute against a man-to-man, -man, Coach Bryce Drew says, we're going to throw a zone on you and see what you got for that. Look, the Wolverines had no answer. Dixon, near side, block shift. High by Overton. Dixon up over to mid guard, quickly to Freyer. Freyer drives down low. Back to mid guard. Hands it back to Freyer. Freyer stops, pops, short. Freyer's missed from that spot twice. Yeah, he had one kind of in that area, but he was probably five foot feet closer than that step back three point shot. It's really hard to, to get it up over the front of that rim. Cool. Swarm Freyer in mid guard. Back out, Overton. Just get up on his left shoulder. Eight on the shot clock. Overton looking to drive. Step back. Nothing but net. Well, Oscar Freire has come up hobbling on that play. He wants to tee the timeout. I think all the officials, don't they stop for an injured player on the floor? Bryce Drew trying to comment about it, trying to get a whistle here. Freire's talking to the official like, hey, I'm injured. I need, I need you to stop the play. Good Labor. Nursing it a little bit. Oh. Such good footwork on a labor down there on that block. He's so good on either block, but he normally operates on the left block. Look at this one more time. You don't get on that left shoulder, you get beat. Let's see what happens here. You get kicked. Look at the, the, his right foot. Frere's left foot kind of banged 
bound into it as he hobbled on that left foot. We're nursing a little bit of an ankle tweak. I don't know if that was re aggravated or not. Jordy Hackett, athletic trainer over there. Like they're getting that shoe and that sock off to wrap get some more tape on it. Yeah, <laughs> wrap it up. <laughs> they don't shoot up the college kids, up. do they? Only in the pro level, they just shoot them with that cortisone. Get back, <laughs> get back in there. I don't know if they do that anymore. Back in the 90s, I'll tell you what. You see that doctor coming with that needle, boy, you start oh. getting the sweaty palms. Gordy Hackett's been busy the last couple of games. Off the mark on the back end, Woodbury with the rebound. 33-28, Lopes on top. Different story here, but this is far from over. Overton. Back out. Fuller back in the game. Amac. Now Amac's got to go up against the guy. He's given up 25 pounds. Not so easy to back down. Fuller looking to back in himself. Goes right hand. Big hook and drops. Uh, we watched Fuller walking out you earlier before the game. You were commenting on how big he is in the upper body and the chest and those biceps. And that time he flexed his muscles down there on that right block. We got family and friends watching from Gilbert, Arizona, the Highland High School grad. Yeah, look at him really battling labor down there underneath, not allowing labor to get the good position. Three point lead, Midgard, right hand and in. Oh, that was huge. Now you got to get a stop. You got the crowd going nuts. You got a five point lead. Get a stop and take this momentum to the locker room. Nine points, four and six in the field for Midgard. Can they stop? Utah Valley here, five-point lead, Overton. He's been sharp, stopping, popping, in and out. He's on the ground, heaved down the court. The Lopes have a five-point lead at the half. Well, nice job. You fell behind by 10. You outscored him 15 points the rest of the way. You snatched the momentum. And more importantly, you got some guys playing with fire in their belly. That's true, talking to the officials a little bit here at the half. Maybe yeah, checking the prayer why, why they didn't stop play? Or? Well, yeah, I, I, I was always under the impression if there was an injured player on the floor that the officials will stop for an injury timeout, not charge the team with a timeout. But they just did not afford the Lopes that, that opportunity. Different story here tonight, lots of intensity. Head coach Bryce Drew putting on the headset. Let's send it down to Kate Longwood. Coach, last night you talked about it being an emotional defeat, and tonight your team has come out there. You didn't know how they would respond. What stands out to you with what you've seen from them in this first half? You know, it starts with rebounding. Rebound the ball much better tonight, uh, being much more aggressive with our box outs, and just a lot more energy. I think our guys are playing much more energetic tonight, much more with freedom. Uh, last night we were really tight in that first half. Now we got to do it for another 20 minutes. You sparked a 22 and seven run. Uh, what was the urgency or the difference maker during that stretch for the team? What did you see showing up on the court? You know, we were able to get some stops, rebound the basketball, and then I thought our transition was good. We were able to push and, and we made shots. You know, when you make shots, everything goes a lot smoother, looks better. You know, we need to continue to make outside shots. All right, thank you so much, Coach, for your time. We'll see how it all goes in the second half. Meanwhile, right now, GCU taking the five-point lead at the break over the Wolverine. The sense of urgency, you can feel it here inside GCU Arena. We'll continue to discuss all that's at stake and what the looks have to do when we come back with the Looks Halftime Show. As a kid, I always dreamed of being a Division I athlete. GCU supported that dream and they also allowed me to get an education. So when I came to GCU, I was able to transfer enough credits in to fast track my education. So I graduated in three years with a master's and I did it debt free because I had athletic and academic scholarships. I'm Mackenzie and I earned my MBA from Grand Canyon University. There's a thunder in all of us. Come find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Joel Embiid is unhappy. Like, really unhappy. Because the internet keeps using not-so-amazing GIFs to react to his amazing highlights. Mountain Dew presents the Joel Embiid Deserves Better Reactions GIF Collection. Now I'm so happy. 
When the going got tough, many people bunkered down. Dealerships turned to mundane sales online with impersonal deliveries, not Sanderson Ford. We chose to work even harder and provide more personalized service and value in our showroom. Or you can shop from home, buy from home, and we'll deliver. We've been delivering vehicles to our customers for over 65 years. Call Luis Gonzalez. Hey David, I'm just pulling in with your new truck. Wow, I'm blown away. Thanks for the personalized service. I'm Monty Unlimited with Liam from Men's Basketball. Today we're going to play some Lope Likely to find out more about the team. Most likely to go on Dancing with the Stars. Definitely Dima. Dima? Dima's definitely the one that's going to be on Dancing with the Stars. He, he, he probably will be on Dancing with the Stars eventually. Who would be his partner? Maybe me. I mean, there's, there's nothing oh. like... Yeah, maybe me. We, we'd be a great dance duo. You can picture it. Most likely to be a heartbreaker. Definitely Gabe. Gabe? Yeah, Gabe's, Why? Gabe's a heartbreaker. I mean, he's just he's a good looking guy. Like Most likely to forget where they parked their car in the parking garage. Dima. Dima? Yeah. Why? You know, he forgets sometimes. Can, can, he, <laughs> can he drive here? Yeah, he could drive. I mean, he could drive a little bit. I mean, he's a very, I would say, okay driver. I wouldn't say he's very good. Well, I'm never getting in the car with him, so. Most likely to be left on red. Probably Ethan Spry. Ethan Spry, why? Yeah. I mean, he's just a quiet guy. I mean, very nice guy. I mean, nice guys finish last. I mean, according to Ethan Spry, but I mean. Most likely to marry a celebrity. Definitely Rafe. Rafe would definitely marry a celebrity. Who would he marry? Definitely someone from Scottsdale. Yep. <laughs> okay, who? <laughs> <laughs> Most likely to still sleep with their childhood stuffed animal. No, yeah, definitely Chance. Chance is like, you know, he sleeps a lot, and I feel like, you know, he might need a little sleep buddy every once in a while. I'll tell you what, when it's March and the madness is upon us and a game is as exciting as this and you're a college basketball fan, we're all kids at heart, right? Well, right now, the Lopes with a five-point lead over the Wolverines last night. Of course, advantage went to Utah Valley tonight, though not only bragging lights on the line, but the Lopes trying to get their share at a co-championship in the regular season to make school history come true tonight. We'll see how it all ends up. And this year, life has, of course, been a little different for everyone. Limited capacity here at GCU Arena. But next year, we hope it will be back to normal. And and Lopes fans, you have a chance to be here for GCU men's basketball. Season tickets will go on sale July 1st, but you can sign up now for the wait list to be one of the first contacted when tickets become available for purchase. The wait list also gives you an opportunity to select premium seats. To join the wait list, visit gculopes.com slash season tickets. Tickets will sell out. So now is the time to make sure you're not left out of this excitement. After all, today is the season finale and it's all coming down to this game with the number one seed on the line for the WAC tournament. When we come back, Barry and Scott will recap highlight stats and much, much more from the first half. We'll be right back. At Tire Pros, we know your time is valuable. And spending time with family and friends is what really matters. Our customers are the core of our business. That's why we make buying tires and auto service hassle free. Our certified technicians will keep your car running smoothly. So you can spend your time the way that you want. Find a convenient location near you at tireprosofarizona.com. Hassle free guarantee. Grand Canyon University, a Christian university, is one of the largest and fastest growing universities in the country. GCU offers 270 dynamic academic programs with modern apartment style living, classrooms, labs, restaurants, and more. Located in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, GCU's vibrant community and expansive campus is ranked top 20 for best college campuses in America. My university integrates the free market system with a welcoming Christian worldview perspective into its academic programs and throughout campus life. So you can put your faith into action and help transform communities. GCU campus students received over $157 million in scholarships in 2020, and many students attend GCU for less than the cost of a state university. Visit gcu.edu slash my offer to see the scholarships you qualify for. 
Admissible high school seniors can schedule a free visit from anywhere in the country. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash my offer. Beautiful evening in the Valley of the Sun after a picture perfect day. The Lopes up by five at the half. Welcome back, GCU Arena, Barry Butel, alongside Scott Williams. Well, it was kind of a little nerve wracking <laughs> off the top, Scott. It was 15 to five. The Wolverines came out, kind of punched the Lopes in the mouth again. Was it going to be a deja vu all over again? But the Lopes come back storming. 30 to 15 run. They get back into this game and up by five. They responded nicely. They did it as a team. They started this game four of 10, zero assists. A lot of one on one play, looked disjointed at times, like fish out of water, bad spacing, air and passing. And then they righted the ship. 10 to 16 to finish the half with six assists. They did it a variety of different ways, making the inside slashing baskets uh, go into the hole. Um, I love this one right here. Get a little screen from your big fella and take it right onto the rack. They moved the ball extremely well. Much better spacing the footwork down on the block. Not shying away and falling away from the basket. Taking it right to the heart of the shot block. Just one point in that first half for AMAC, by the way. This one here. How that ball just hung on that rim and falls back in. Almost like one of those Nike commercials with Tiger Woods. You know, showing that logo and that ball going back in the basket. But the Blothin hits threes. Dixon hitting some outside shots. Labor hits some threes. He's in that run. Some really good job moving the basketball, playing together, and most importantly, like Coach Strew said, they crashed the glass. Look at the advantage on the glass, a plus six. First half stats brought to you by Commonwealth Insurance. Bench points, yeah, Big Ten that we weren't really heard from from the bench a night ago. Second chance points you mentioned. Rebounding margin in favor of the Lopes tonight as well. Yeah, those turnovers, those seven turnovers, most of those came in about the first five minutes. So really solid to finish the half, taking care of that basketball. Midgard with nine points, four of six from the field. Uh, the battle of the bigs. He's got the first half in the books. Kate will be back with more right after this. Joel Embiid is unhappy. Like, really unhappy. Because the internet keeps using not-so-amazing gifts to react to his amazing highlights. Mountain Dew presents the Joel Embiid Deserves Better Reactions gift collection. Now I'm so happy. I would say to anybody considering maybe skipping graduation to spend a long time thinking about participating. I think it's a great opportunity to really take advantage of a moment that you only get once in your life. It, it's an opportunity to really experience something that highlights all the hard work that you've put in. Not very many people get to experience that in their life. It's such an honor and a privilege to be able to do that. And I think the memories that come out of that are just incredible. Herf Jones, by your side. The temperature scanning kiosk from Pacific Office Automation is an easy to use attendant free device that quickly checks a person's temperature anytime, anywhere. You can now provide peace of mind at schools and universities, grocery stores, restaurants, nursing homes, medical clinics, sporting events, offices, private gatherings, and more. Look to us to help you reduce the risk and be safe. Visit PacificOffice.com. Pacific Office Automation. Problem solved. Welcome back. The Lopes players running onto the onto the court right now, getting ready for second half action. Right now, they have a four five point lead at the break, 35-30 over the Wolverines, shooting 54 percent so far on the night. With Mick Guard leading the way for all scores, nine points to his name. Lopes bench coming alive, 10 points total. Gabe leading efforts, he has six points. Meanwhile, the Wolverines big man, Aim Ak, has six points and Overton with eight points. All right, first half is in the books. The final half for the Lopes regular season is coming at you right out of this. Break, so grab a snack. We'll be back with the exciting conclusion right after this. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. 
From reimagining the way you work to reassessing what you need, you've changed the way you do business. And now, so have we. With no annual contracts and flexible internet and voice solutions, you'll have what you need to get back to business. Rethink, reconnect, reimagine. Switch to Cox Business today. At Raising Cane's, we know quality takes time, patience, and the best ingredients, which is why every chicken finger we serve is hand-battered and cooked to order just for you. We never take shortcuts. That doesn't mean you can't. Introducing an even faster and easier way to order canes with our new app. Find your closest restaurant, customize your meal, pay and schedule pickup. So next time, take it easy and order with the Raising Cane's app. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers, one love. <laughs> Herf Jones by your side presenting tonight's Clash, the regular season finale here in Phoenix, Arizona. Between the Lopes and the Wolverines, with GCU up by five. How about the Bigs? How about Midgard? Scott, nine points in the opening half. Oh, I like big bodies, that's for sure. Asborn Midgard, a different player from he was a night ago. He is being ultra aggressive, taking it right to the body of the shot block. And AMAC, I love that one right there. You get the big fella moving one way, you snap it back, you come the other direction. This is just good hand-eye coordination. Probably took a, a bump there. Could have been an and one situation, but not the way he's playing. Four or six from the field right now. He's got nine points. Knocked down a free throw in, in uh, labor. You got four points, four rebounds, and he was really good in the second half of last night's game. I'm looking for him to have a big second half in this basketball game as well. I made a mistake and said AMAC had only one point. Well, he's got uh, six points tonight, but he's only got the one rebound. He hasn't been a factor on that offensive glass, Barry, so you know he got a stern talking to him at locker room. So Lopes got to continue to put a body on him and keep him off of that offensive glass. No doubt about it. What's at stake, as you mentioned, and we have on numerous occasions, the WAC regular season co-champions with a Lopes victory the first time in school history. If they lose, Utah Valley, the top seed, the Lopes, the number two seed right now, New Mexico State looks like the number three seed. Hit guard, only eight points last night. You mentioned he has nine, four of six shooting. He was four of nine total last night. So he has responded here after one half of play. Yeah, and, and he's playing like the nation's highest field goal percentage shooter by being aggressive. Like I said, everything, all his power, all his weight, all his energy moving towards the bucket on the shots. Last night he was settling for just getting space away from the shot blocker. So nice job making an adjustment from game one to game two. Here we go. So watch the things to watch out of the Wolverines this half. Watch Woodbury trying to get hot. He was had a cold half. He only had two points after having 16 points last night. And, and of course, AMAC, number two offensive rebounder in the nation, only with one rebound. So you know he, he's going to get a, try to get a, a, his points and more opportunities for his teammates off the offensive glass. Cole. AMAC looking to back in on. Coming over, sir. Help was Dixon to disrupt him. Neil Woodbury, three, not there. Good defense by the Lopes. Dixon on the run, cuts in off the window and in. Wow! Whoa! Wait! We just big-handed that basketball right past the defender's ear hole with a long step, and he was off to the the basket with one giant leap. Oh, Blackshirt's gonna be called. Lopes coming out of the room with a lot more intensity. We'll go back to this one more time. You rebound the basketball, you can run. Blackshear always with his eyes up. Look at that, just takes the ball right over the top of the dude's forehead. On his way to the rack. Nice play by Mikey Dixon through the bench. <laughs> Trying to recreate that motion. That's one thing you we didn't see the bench have a whole lot of opportunities for the first 30 minutes of that basketball last night. The culture that Coach Drew has established here at Grand Canyon University is getting everybody up. They've almost created a, a little bit of a family type of organization here. Great culture. Neil connects on both of the 
Utah Valley's first free throws. Freyer from the corner off the mark. I like Midgard being unselfish there, but you know, he catches the ball six feet from the basket. That's where they're trying to get in the ball. And that doesn't go. Yeah, they got Midgard pushing off underneath. They're trying to work on Cole Pulls. Giving up some pounds, but he's so sneaky, so fast at getting into little crevices. And that time he got by Midgard. Midgard to throw that right arm out there, move pull out the way. Inbound for Utah Valley. Quick. Stoned. Midgard looking for a call. Amax going to be called, pushing on Dixon. Wow, I'll tell you what, this GCU low fast break right now is racking it up in, in the fourth gear, and he got that steal. They were like a, a jailbreak trying to get to the offensive end. He had a, he had a number of different places he can go. Got that steal, and look, you got Frere out there, you got Dixon out there, and Dixon just won the race. Dixon, wide open look, doesn't go. Pushed out, Neal runs into Overton. Overton takes it from Neal. Up and under, doesn't happen, mid guard. Better job getting to his left shoulder. Last year, Dixon. Back out, Midgard quickly to Freyer. Labor comes out. Dixon cuts in. Steps back. Freyer quickly. Midgard down low. Dish back out. Dixon for three. Midgard underneath. No doubt about it. Oh, the big fellas chewing glass tonight. He is fired up. He moved a bunch of people out of the way to say, I want this basketball. This basketball belongs to me. Dixon front rims it. And look at that. Just moved Overton right out of the way. <laughs> a 100-point pound advantage on Overton. And just powers it back home. Big fella came to play tonight. Wilkes have a 7-0 margin and second chance points. Overton doesn't go. Comes up over the top. Great job defensive, staying hands high. He got the body contact, but he wasn't right into the chest. Arm stayed high, did not come down on top of Overton. He's frustrated. He wants to get that body contact. The official saying, you initiated the contact. The defense has every right to that position, and I think they're correct. Crowds rallying behind the lopes here tonight. Prayer up over the top to Labor. Labor. Turnaround. Good! Uh, that was lunch down there. He made it a little tougher than it had to be, but didn't want to throw the left hand. Hook comes back to that strong uh, right turn finish and knocked it down. Lopes right now is sizzling. Nine point lead, GCU. Cole, 20 points a night ago. To Woodbury. Back to Cole. Cole, underneath. Pushes it in. I'm just going to say, Cole's been quiet. He yep. had the first two field goals, a quick five points. He was 0-4 since uh, after that. And then gets that little right-hand hook right in front of the rim. Blackshirt underneath. This is a handle. Good guide. Cole, little Euro, doesn't go. Far side, Freyer on by Woodbury. Bounce pass into Labor in the post. Aim back on him. Look at the move. Goes. Big hook and in. Oh, Ellis. Well, that's one thing Labor does really well on that right block. He gets the defense going one way. And he likes to come back to that left shoulder turn, throwing that uh, right hand in. Got eight points and four boards. Woodbury to Amac. Amac. Oh, nice hand move. push, that was. Wow, nice oh, footwork oh, down there by the 250-pound AMAC. So I, I've been watching what you've been doing to me. I'm going to come out and come back and do a little bit of that to you. A man that size, man, his footwork is stellar. Yeah, just this. He's just going to get better and better. There's going to be a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> this, uh, everybody in the Western Athletic Conference for another year. Wow. Oh, Blackshear going down here, diving for the ball, and then <laughs> just trying to get oh. out of the way and get stomped with a right foot of J.J. Overton. Going got tough, many people bunkered down. 
dealerships turn to mundane sales online with impersonal deliveries, not Sanderson Ford. We chose to work even harder and provide more personalized service and value in our showroom. Or you can shop from home, buy from home, and we'll deliver. We've been delivering vehicles to our customers for over 65 years. Call Luis Gonzalez. Hey David, I'm just pulling in with your new truck. Wow, I'm blown away. Thanks for the personalized service. I'm personal injury attorney James Bergener. Accidents can happen. If something happens to you or your family, call me. My firm and I will take you by the hand and guide you through everything. You see, personal injuries are just that. They're personal. You're not a number. You're more than just a name. This is your life. At my firm, each case is professionally and personally tailored to you. So if you've been injured, I've got your back. Call me now for a free consultation. GCU Basketball is brought to you in part by Sanderson Ford. The best play in a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. By Herf Jones. By your side. By Community Tire Pros, celebrating 30 years, keeping vehicles safe. And by Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. 43-36, Lopes on top. Some great positive energy on campus on a beautiful day. How about the game winner by Ryan Cruz? And the lacrosse squad. Told me he's a freshman, right? Yeah. Big things for this kid's future. Oh, look at how beautiful it is. The palm trees. 80 degrees. There's just got that winning mojo on campus. Well, let it continue tonight, right? Jerry Colangelo's in the house for this big matchup. Godfather of sports at Phoenix. Of course, President Mueller and the First Lady are here as well. Midgard on the line to shoot two. Those bigs, Labor and Midgard. 20 points, nine rebounds. Yeah, they've done the darn thing tonight for sure. They've come to play. Whatever they have for the pregame meal, they eat every night in Vegas. I heard you could eat in Vegas. All you can eat? You ever had one of those all you can eat buffets? Oh, look at me, man. <laughs> you kidding? Yes, sir. Did we get to go to Vegas? <laughs> Sorry. Charge. Woodbury. Woodbury stuck on that launch pad tonight. He was sensational a night ago. Just two points in this one. Hadn't been able to get going. Tried to get in there a little drawn and kick, but just runs right over the top of a GC defender. Taking one right in the chest for his teammate. Watson. Blackshirt got stomped. A couple possessions ago, he's still in the basketball game. Tell me he doesn't want this, a, a share of this whack title. Definitely a lot more giddy up in his step tonight. Sean Miller Moore over to Blackshirt. Good pressure by the Wolverines coming out of that timeout. Really yep. extended that pressure all the way out to midcourt. Bloth on top of the key. Bounced off the court. Amac able to gather it back up. Neal to Woodbury. Back to Neal. Step back. Finds Amac. Little push. Man. It doesn't look like that shot should go in. We watched him shooting that yeah. on Friday night in the warm-ups. You're thinking, ooh, what is that? And then the, both times he has shot it and used it in the games, he has hit nothing but the bottom of the net with it. Looks better be careful. Tom Valley. Coming back. Blackshirt. Here and miss again. And Amac picking up those boards here in the second half. We knew he was going to get on the glass. You can't hold him down. He may get 30, uh, 20 rebounds three times this season. 25 for his high. Overton. Muscling his way. Not going to happen. Pushes up. Dixon. Turns. Pivots. Off the window. Doesn't go. That's the one you wish Dixon just had a little more size to be able to elevate and, and dunk the ball. And then Woodbury comes back and heats him right to the rack. He always looking for that contact inside. He gets the contact and the benefit of the whistle that Dixon doesn't get. He does one more time. Fouling him out there. If you're going to foul him, go ahead and foul him. With only three team fouls, put him on the line. Do not give him an opportunity to go all the way to the basket and get an end. 
They are in. The labor. Yeah, that's, that's just that disadvantage that um, Miller Moore has got right now with that being about 50% with that thigh injury. He just wasn't able to keep up with the speedy Woodbury. Miller Moore goes right to the stationary bike. McMillan in for him. A nine Press. point lead, and all of a sudden, Wolverines come back out with a little bit more pressure and cut into that deficit. Blackshear, hit go. Amac on him tight. Goes right hand, doesn't go. Amac pulls up another rebound, and the momentum has shifted. He sure has. One and done for the low suddenly, not able to get anything to go from the outside, not able right now to get anything to go inside either. Oh, for the last four of the low travel. Woodbury right now just trying to attack that basket, but as he comes to that jump stop, he just can't stop all that forward momentum he has and slides that pivot foot. Press again. Now this press has bothered the Lopes. If nothing else, it has taken them maybe a little bit faster than they want to play. McLaughlin with a shot that you kind of don't hope that he would think that maybe I'll just do a little dribble weave handoff and Oh, look at here. Oh, feeds back to Blackshear. Draws the foul. The starters have 35 of the 45 points in this basketball game. I mean, 10 points off the bench is a good number, but I don't want the bench players thinking they can do things that they not normally do. I mean, you get McLaughlin hitting a three-point shot in the first half, and now all of a sudden he thinks he's, you know, Steph Curry out there. You be the energy bunny, run the floor, set the picks, take the charges, get on the offensive glass, pick and rolls. You know, stay with what you normally do. Fuller in for a Mack. Blackshear, McLaughlin, McMillan, far side. Drives, kick back. Freyer wants three. Midgard comes up over the top. Fuller's on him. Midgard backing him up. Fuller called for the foul. Well, I like that one with Midgard. He got the offensive rebound, worked hard for it, and it's trying to find someone to kick it to. And it's like, wait a minute. I got the ball a step offside the block, my favorite block. Let me just go right back and power the ball back to the basket. I'm only a foot away from where my, my favorite spot on the floor is. He goes, okay, I can do this myself. Crab dribble right back down and draw the foul. Five team fouls now for the Wolverines. So Lopes are just a couple fouls away from shooting free throws. Lopes have a 5-1 offensive rebound margin. McLaughlin brings it in left hand off the window. Wow. 9-0 second chance points for the guys hitting the blue shirts. Great jive ball and McLaughlin. And that's what I like to see him look. Going to the basket. Turnover. McMillan got it. McLaughlin helped as well. Fryer! Oh, it doesn't go. Into Blackshirt. But bam baby! Now this place is coming unglued right now. Getting a turnover, using your wheels in transition. Flight number four took off, but he lost the ball. And a lucky bounce that goes right over to Blackshirt, who knocks down with three. Lopes back up nine. Awkward turn of events. Yeah, I love this one by McLaughlin. That, that's the energy, that's the effort, that's the hustle you want to see him doing. And I love this one right here. Uh, maybe that would be an assist, Jared. I don't know. But it goes right into the chest between the letters and the numbers of uh, Blackshears, and he calmly knocks it down. That's the wildest pass I've ever seen. I don't know if we're giving him an assist for that one. Now, let's send it down to Kate Longley. Well, guys, it's pretty exciting right now when you're seeing this team kind of come together, put it all together, and then you think that they really haven't been a team under Coach Drew for a full year yet. He was hired uh, mid-March of last year. And when you come into a program where the players are already in place, not the guys you recruited necessarily, you're bringing in a whole new coaching si uh, staff and system, you kind of wonder what leads to a team's success. So we had a chance to talk to Coach Drew about that. And he said the success and the fact that this team has a chance at a share in this championship for the regular season is all because the players chose to buy in. He said it came down to the players making up their mind that they were going to accept Coach Drew at the helm and what he was trying to tell them that this team could be successful hanging their hat on certain ways like their defense. And they really all went out there, did it. And he said he's been very impressed. And it starts with the upperclassmen, he said, setting the tone. And I think we've seen evidence of that. And I know we talked with you, Scott, about not, it didn't happen in your collegiate career, in your professional career, of course. Different coaches came aboard on different teams. 
But if you could just pitch it back, I know it wasn't that long ago, but to be a collegiate player and you commit to one thing, you get a new coach out there, I think it kind of speaks volumes for what Coach Drew has brought over here, the fact that the guys are going out there and implementing his uh, system. Yeah, and his communication and his leadership becomes infectious with the rest of the guys. They can see that they he wants the best for them. Obviously not having basketball, having it taken from them last year. They are happy to be out here playing. And, you know, Coach Marley was missed, but Coach Drew has come in here and, and, and I think changed the culture for the better. Back underway after the timeout with Billy. Four. Near side. Looks inside. Neal kicks back out. Good ball movement. Woodbury has it. Ten on the shot clock. Looks to drive. Had some open lanes a night ago. Those have been shut down primarily here tonight. Up high, not there. And they're going to call gold titting on that one. Got a hand on it. Got that ball after it had hit the backboard. Let's take a look. Nice drive here. And See if this is, hits the ball, the backboard first. Yeah, hits the backboard, and then Mikdar comes over and gets his right paw on it. Blackshaw. Back to Javon. Blackshaw up high, Mikdar. Mikdar! No doubt about it. That time he just took the ball. He looked over his right shoulder like he was going to come back to the middle and spun back baseline. Left the defense flat footed and slammed it home. Cole. Right hand. Doesn't go. Midgard trying to grab it and he's fouled. Midgard is playing big man basketball. Look at this one more time. Drop off by Blackshear Jr. And Midgard says, I got it from here. Everybody out of my way. It's time to get away. It's time to escape. It's a new day to play. Your retreat awaits at Talking Stick Resort. Indulge your appetite for excitement with our thrilling table games, our electrifying slots, our outstanding restaurants, and our exceptional accommodations. It's all waiting for you. It's a new day to play at Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. Time for our sweet play of the half. How about Mikey Dixon with the finish? Well, I love this one right here. Blackshirt Jr.'s always got his head, his eyes up, and then just delivers a strike. I mean, you want to talk about precision passing. Gets it right over, and then just a nice, sweet little side step by the defense on his way to the rack, and <laughs> the guys on the bench having some fun with that one. Pit guard, 15 points, seven rebounds. You know, this second half, the Lopes have looked really good at getting that ball off the glass and getting out and running the fast break points. Now 7-3 to three advantage for the Lopes. Always interesting how the teams respond after timeouts. Coaching staffs, respectively. Right up plays. Yeah, I mean, I mean, look at the guys in green shirts. They already got their 2 2 1 full court press on. And there's hope to see if they can get a deflection or a steal. Try to slow this Lopes attack up. Lothan. Finds Blackshirt. A little soft. Blackshirt fire sign. Top. Goes right. Right. Up over the top. McLaughlin in the paint. McMillan. McLaughlin. Four on the shot clock. Stopped by Fuller. 
Nice job by Fuller. He's, he can't handle the big fella, McLaugh uh, Midgard. But uh, McLaughlin, if you can't beat me with your speed, I'm going to catch up to you with my size. Tight D by the Wolverines. Woodbury. Labor over the scores table. Dixon follows. Garther left the court. They carried him off last night. Good to see him back in the court. Yeah, he's, the moving, he's moving nicely, too. He got a lot of that chuck and jive in this game. Amat push. Too heavy. Uh, Midgard has got one up glass. Eight boards now for Midgard in this game. Stop, pop. Big rebound. Fuller and McLaughlin grab it at it. Watch that right Lopes. there. Yeah, that's that's why I like to see McLaughlin live. Anything from those those letters, the WAC and N. Go down there, get on that offensive glass, young man. This day's Muhammad Ali used to say, "Rumble, young man, rumble." Yeah. Officials jumped in there quick. Remember how chippy that game was last night? They got we got some guys got knocked to the floor. They got armbands, throw chops. They had a little bit of everything last night. Officials are. Good. I'm sure the word was out. Don't let these two teams, you know, get into that kind of uh, those fracases, fracases. They did it. WWE did it a night ago. Because look, flavor. This should be lunch right here. That's his favorite block. Feed the man. <laughs> he did feed him, and he ate. Oh, uh, it does. Uh, all you can eat buffets when he gets down on that right block. He doesn't play on the right block as much because Midgard struggles on the left block, so he lets his buddy have the right block. When he catches that ball on that right block, it's two points. 25 points for the Bigs. The GCU in the corner. Darther. Oh, that was a big time bucket right there. They found Darther deep in the corner. It seemed like they lost him. Sometimes it's hard to find those players deep in that corner. That's why the coaching staff yelling, get flat, get flat for that baseline. It's almost like you're hiding in the bushes down there, and all of a sudden you pop out and say, ah, forgot about you. Make you pay. Uh, foul over 10. That's free throw. That's the seventh team foul now. Labor going to go to the line. A good free throw shooter. Lopes will be shooting free throws the rest of the game. They didn't get to the line too much last night. And only three opportunities from the free throw line, but they've been more aggressive tonight inside, getting on offensive rebounds, pushing the ball to the basket, getting out in that transition, and now Labor's got a chance to go to the line and knock down a couple. That's three on Overton. So had a lot of energy on the court. Tell me, Labor's only shooting 65% from the line. He must have had a, a fallen off in February somewhat, but no, no problem with that one. He knows how big this game is tonight. He's generally up in the upper 70s, if not 80% free throw shooter. I wouldn't be surprised to see him make both of these, Bear. Really did that. I got confidence in my bigs tonight. They are balling. Ouch. I'll take that one. Put that one on me. Approaching nine and a half to go. Amac. Cole, far side, over 10. Back to Amac, beyond the arc. Leads for Woodbury. Over to Amac. Looking to move in. Amac. Midgard called. Hey, can we just give credit where credit is due? Uh, Maymac gets a, a tough pass off a dribble drive, a good hand eye coordination, grabs it. Then he gets nice and low, uses those crab dribbles to get the defender back up under that painted uh, basket area, mm -hmm. and then he goes into his jump hook. I mean, that's. That's some real quality basketball out of that big fella. You think you have a guy getting 15 and a half rebounds a game, leading the nation, something that hasn't been done in 41 years. He's not going to have those types of skills around the bucket offensively, but he sure can not play. I'm really impressed. You're going to see this guy playing next level someday. Can't shoot no free throws, though. Mercer's loss is Utah Valley's game, no doubt about it. Good find for Coach Madsen and his staff. Yeah, you know, the water up in Vancouver. You ever been to Vancouver? Oh, Vancouver is beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, oh, that's see the high Stanley skyway Park. from Seattle to Vancouver. Yeah, it's beautiful. beautiful. Little pricey, but beautiful. Midgard! Right hand doesn't go. Yeah, that's that falling that. away hook. Yeah. Yeah, he kind of gotten away from that in the first half. More power for the basket. Now, he was playing in a sea of green jerseys. He almost had to fall away. Oh, did you see Midgard? But Overton comes back. That doesn't go. Labor's coming out of there. Well, Labor can't believe it. He said, he didn't have the ball. He had my wrist. Uh, <laughs> come on. 
I like the way these guys are fighting. This is they what are. championship basketball is all about. This is March Madness. This is what we're here for. I love him down there fighting and scrapping. Overton couldn't get the second one to go. All his arms down there. And the Laver kind of is like, hey, listen, he, look at they got me on the arm, but he, he really? took one hand off the ball trying to move somebody out of the way, and that gave um, Woodbury, thank you, Woodbury, an opportunity to go in there and tie him up. Push, push by Amac. Doesn't go. Frere and, and the Overton were battling underneath. They got tangled up. Here goes Blackshear Jr. Blackshear underhand doesn't go. Pushed out. I'm not sure if the officials know which yeah, what the ball is supposed to go. We didn't we didn't really get a clean get call, a call from anybody. Thank you. Wow, on the Wolverines. Oh, okay. There's free throws. All right, so here we go again. Blackshear Jr. going to the basket. He must have called the contact there. Did not you could you're so loud in here even with this limited capacity these <laughs> havoc the student body they're going nuts you can't hear the whistles out there with guard out mclaughlin mclaughlin how about dave quality minutes 14 minutes eight points been disruptive yeah, he's been real good. Yeah. He, that that three-point shot worries me a little bit sometimes. He makes that three-point shot, but he, he realizes, like, okay, that that's an outlier. That's the that's the bonus play. Let me go back in here and go to my bread and butter, and be around that basket with the, the layups and the offensive rebounds. That's that's where he's at his best. That's where the team needs. They got plenty of guys that can shoot three-pointers on. Blackshear takes a breather on the bench. Ten points, four assists, three rebounds for number ten. Woodbury looking for some room. Oh, he didn't have much, did he? Well, Woodbury has been aggressive in this second half. It almost looked like he has had nothing on a number of occasions, but um, the calls go to the player who is more aggressive and a couple times going down there along those uh, baseline into that painted area, Woodbury's gotten a benefit of the whistle. Woodbury drains. See if there's contact here. Like I said, just being aggressive. There wasn't a whole lot of anything there. It's easy when we slow it down, though. I don't yeah. want to be official. I don't ever want to wear one of those striped shirts. Okay. Pretty rare, they say. Great game. <laughs> Nobody says that. <laughs> Nobody's happy. Somebody's going home. Thank you. McMillan. 10 on the shot clock. Frayer. Ooh, careful. Underhand. Labor down beneath. Gabe McLaughlin. How about the ball movement? Great ball movement. Get it inside. The Labor let him play kind of a point center situation against the inside of that zone defense. He does a great job finding his buddy on the baseline. 30 points in the paint for the Lopes tonight. That's a great number. Overton. AJ Overton. I like this kid. Kind of reminds me of Chris Gatlin, left-handed player, yeah. likes to play nice off the reference. dribble. Long, lanky, athletic. Time, Time on the, the floor. Lopes up by nine. How about the passing? The great interior passing. That's something that this bigs have done all year long very well. Ability to share the basketball high to low, low to high. Well, it was AMAC last night with a number of uh, rebounds, but tonight, the other big, GCU's big, Asborn Midgard has been heard from. Yeah, he didn't like getting his butt kicked last night. He has come back with a vengeance tonight. Just a lot more power and energy around the basket. Showing his size and his frame. He's using all the 275 pounds, but with some good footwork as well. I mean, a lot of one and done. The offensive boards, 28 rebounds for the Lopes in this basketball game. I think the bigs have been a big part of that. but. Also, the gang rebounded as well. That's my favorite one right there. Look at the scowl on his face. He's not leaving his floor with a loss. He said, the last time I wear a Lopes uniform at home in front of the Havocs, I'm coming out of here with a W. Set it down to Kay Longworth. Well, guys, it's March. 
So tournaments are uh, just around the corner, so it's a perfect time to take a look at the landscape of Division I men's basketball, taking a look at the top 10. Gonzaga leading the way with a 24-0 perfect record. Meanwhile, Michigan right behind them, 19-2. Rounding off this top 10, Villanova in that 10th spot. But how about Baylor? Number three, and it's been a big week for the Drew brothers tonight, of course. Bryce has a chance to make some history with the Lopes if the Lopes would go on and win this game and capture a co-WAC championship. And Baylor, earlier this week, clinched its first Big 12 title. They currently sit at a 20-1 and record overall, 12-1 and in the Big 12, and a perfect 10-0 and at home. And what's so great uh, with the brothers is, as we've uh, already seen earlier this year, they check in with each other, try and keep an eye on each other's team. We know brothers can have a little bit of a rivalry, but these brothers really supported each other. So it would be great if uh, Bryce is able to uh, have some bragging rights to go along with Big Brother. Yeah, when, when, when has two brothers ever won the, their, their league championships in the same season? I bet that hasn't happened but a handful of times. And, you know, uh, Bryce got a chance to do that tonight. Block shares three, rebound labor. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, reset, work a little clock here. I mean, not to say that you want to start changing the way you're playing, but you got a chance to burn another a full minute on this possession off of this game clock. Black shirt. You got that 1-3-1 one, one zone defense again, really extending it out past the three-point line. Oh, Black shirt is picked off. Overton. That's the foul. He draw the foul or commit the foul. <laughs> he hit, yeah, he hit Frere, uh, Frere all upside the head with an elbow. But you know, that's that one where you got to take care of the basketball. You just got it. You just got a new fresh shot clock. You got a chance to burn some time off the game clock. You can't turn the ball over and then let the Wolverines come down and score on a fast break opportunity. There you see New Mexico State. About nine minutes to go in the game. Up over Dixie State. Yeah, you know, we were talking about the the, the uh, Drew brothers watching each other's team. I mean, Tarleton, when the Lopes were out there to play, uh, Scott Drew got a, got on a got in his car and drove to the game and, and met mm -hmm. with the Lopes team after the game. I mean, and that was in a pretty nasty rainstorm. I was back in Austin at the same time and, and realized well, the roads were bad. I was going to try to make it to that game, but the roads were so nasty. I said, no way. His brother got out there on those icy roads and did it anyway. Mikey Dixon for three. But bam! Well, Lopes right now enjoy, enjoying one of their largest leads of the game, 11 points, 6.20 to play. And all things are looking good right now. Just take care of the basketball. Over 10. Late ball. Away from the... Foul call that the Lopes number four has for Freyer. Freyer called. Third on Freyer. Uh, look at this one more time here. This is a, oh, a jump shot by Mikey Dixon. He gets that right foot. He plants that right foot and right on that purple line. So instead of the three, they're going to give him two. Shoot. J.J. Overton. Uh, this kid came to play tonight. He only got 12 points, but he has been aggressive. 6 14 to go. I wonder if the Killian Larsons, Blake Davises, Josh Braun's. Yeah, Matt Jackson. Matt and Jackson. Yeah, Jared Martin, all those guys watching this game. Big interest. They, they oh, set the foundation. The follow up. Up. How about that, Scott? Put you in glass. The bigs are doing a darn thing down there on that glass. That's, that's 15 boards and 13 second chance points for the Lopes. 13 to nothing, by the way. Stepped out, Cole. Cole's been off his game tonight. Yeah, he, he got five points early, then came back in the second half and got two points early, but for the most part, he has been quiet in this game. Lopes made a conscious effort to not let him beat him two nights in a row. Lockshire kicked out. Dixon from the corner. Bam! That's a three! I was getting ready to say, I don't like that shot unless it goes in. Nice job by Blackshirt Jr. Finding Mike Dixon at quarter pocket three shot. He likes that quarter pocket three. Time out on the floor. 
One more time. Blackshirt Jr., they can push him up by trapping the basketball. I'm thinking, spin it, spin it back out. It's reset your offense. But he kicks it over the corner. And we've been saying how aggressive the Lopes have been tonight. They have no hesitations on their outside shots. They're knocking it down. You got five different players in double figure scoring tonight. For every three point shot that GCU makes, Copper State Credit Union is going to be making a donation to the Students Inspiring Student Scholarship. For more information, please go to giving.gcu.edu. All those players, this is uh, five and a half to go. The Smash Brothers we had. Yeah, Keontae <laughs> Byrne and Brandy Glaze, yeah, Jerome those guys, Garrison. Those guys are fun. There you see it, the share of the whack regular season title, eight years in the making. Oaks fans following the program, no doubt, on the edge of their seats. Players setting the foundation for Division One basketball. They should all be honored here tonight. The Lopes go on to win it. Yeah, they flip flop Utah Valley a half game in front of the Lopes right now. So Lopes win this one and they flip flop spots. Grand Canyon will take the number one spot. Co champions, but they will uh, get the number one seed in Las Vegas for the. Black Conference tournament title with an opportunity to go to the NC2A's big dance. Mexico State holds that point differential around 16. The Lopes would have the number one seed with a victory. Loose ball. Knocked into the hands of Alessandro Labor. Wow, Mikey, uh, excuse me, Blackshirt Jr. punched that ball away from Cole right into the hands of Labor. Labor far side. What they get? They got Push, A -mount A -mount. down there. Knee in the butt of Midgard. Rooting him off his position. So free throws for Midgard going the line. That's the ninth team foul now for the Wolverines. So after these two, the front of this one and one, they'll be shooting two shots the rest of the way. Asborn Midgard, in case you're at home wondering, 72% shooter from the free throw line this year. Back underneath, Amac's going to be fouled by Labor. Yeah, and a silly foul. Yeah. I understand wanting to get the ball back, but now you just let them go back down the other end to score from opportunity to score from the free throw line. You don't need that offensive rebound right there. Now, the key to you, it's one thing. Now, when you got to try to reach over the top of somebody else, well, I just gave you mid guards free throw Give percentage. Amac yeah, a a a a 62%. From the free throw line, so you got to be really prepared to rebound this miss. And a lot of times, these big guys, if they don't shoot it cleanly from the free throw line, he was 0 for 2 earlier. You got to look for that short rebound that comes out fast and hard. That looked like he was a, an 82 percent shooter on that one. That was back rim and down. I don't want to mess with this man. He's a black guy. You were saying that he's got a, uh, some karate experience. Hit you with a roundhouse. I keep talking bad about his free throw shooting. The way up here, we're on court side. He can say all that stuff. <laughs> He'll be looking for me after the game. That's good. 440 in county. Locks your far side. I'd buy Overton and a Woodbury. Dixon. Back to Blackshirt. In the corner, Frayer. All the way over. Dixon. Puts it on the court. Stop. Pop. Little heavy. Loose ball. Oh, Labor. It is fouled. Get cold. Hey, Amen. It's third. Well, Mikey Dixon penetrates that ball down in there, I guess, you know, right around that, that whack logo. And everybody kind of just steps forward to him and it allows those bigs an opportunity to gain just an advantage where they can get on that offensive glass. Later with four offensive rebounds tonight. I'm not going to say it this time, Barry, but Thank I'm you. thinking it. All right. 14 points. Yeah, the bigs have been big. I mean, 29 points out of the 4-5 the, the position to go along with 18 boards. They both have nine rebounds apiece. So 
both looking to get double doubles in this game. Everton goes it down, leaves from Woodbury. Woodbury quickly, Lakeson back to Woodbury. Looks for the three, doesn't go. Yeah, you're pushing the back, Dixon. Pushing Cole in the back there, he'll send Cole to the free throw line. And that's the ninth team foul on GCU, so both teams in the double bonus remain in this basketball game. Every whistle sends them to the line to shoot two free throws. That's one of the things, they had a 12-point advantage. Stop fouling. They're having a tough enough time scoring. They'll stop putting them on the free throw line. This is falling tight. Doesn't go. Midgard. Dodge the bullet there as Cole not able to get the front of the one and one now. Taking some time. Labor. Near side. Dixon. Prayer to Labor. Dixon. Labor drives baseline. Stop by Cole. Backing in. Backing in. Underhand. Oh, look at that. Is that a little Kevin McHale move? That was nice right there. He took his time, and he had that ball way out there by the Antelope logo and just took his time. Realizing eight seconds on the shot clock was plenty of opportunity for him to get that ball in a good scoring position. And then, like you said, great footwork, great ball fake. He got right to the front of the rim. Overton doesn't go. This is a big possession right here. You're up 14, 315 to play. You can burn some clock. If you get a shot on balance and don't turn the ball over, this really puts a lot of pressure on the look on the uh, Wolverines. Oh man! But he turned it over. Stepped out of bounds. Blackshear. How about Labor? Little underhand. Drops it in. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. From reimagining the way you work, to reassessing what you need. You've changed the way you do business. And now, so have we. With no annual contracts and flexible internet and voice solutions, you'll have what you need to get back to business. Rethink, reconnect, reimagine. Switch to Cox Business today. So far, it's been a big night here at GC Arena. How about the big, Scott? They, they've been huge. That's how big they've been. 31 points on 12 of 18 shooting to go on with 19 rebounds. Double-double for Midgard, and, and uh, Labor just one board away from a double-double tonight. Loves to really come to play. 27 of 53 shooting after a very slow start. They've done it in a variety of different ways. I mean, Labor's done the you know, right block, left block, up in numbers, uh, get to the foul line. Midgard, same thing. Power moves around the basket. Good footwork down long low. Not fading away much tonight. Yeah. You wanted your seniors to step up, right, Barry? I mean, didn't we talk oh, yeah. about that? Who's going to set up and step up and set a tone? Well, I think right now you say you got the fifth year senior <laughs> transfer coming over. and. And uh, Labor, who's been here for four years, waiting for this moment, this opportunity to claim a WAC championship title. Double double from Midgard. Rebound away is Labor. Long three. Are you kidding ah, me? That was a good 28 feet away from the basket. He teed it up. And like I say, look, that's, our, that's our vantage point right there. I want to look good as soon as it left his fingertips. They really needed that basket. It cuts it to a deficit to 11. Sonny Georgia native. Followed by Overton here on Blackshear. Lacer, that's four on Overton. Yeah, Blackshear Jr. is a guy you don't want to foul in that situation. The Lopes can try to put the ball in his hands as much as they can. He's just a tick under 80% from the free throw line. So 
sure ball handler. He almost went down to like the old Globetrotter yeah, move where he was down. Curly on, Neal? Yeah, that's a guy yeah. that he goes down one knee, but still dribbling the ball the entire time while he was down on his bum. Four Washington generals. Money. Still really good about this game out there. Okay. Here's Lacey again. Rings out. Freyer pulled down the rebound. Uh, the Lumps have been so much better on the glass tonight. I mean, Green Shirts had a couple opportunities where they got on some offensive glass, but for the most part, they have been really good on the glass. Seven rebounds for Freyer. Taking seconds off the clock. 26 rebounds out of your front, your front court, rebound of the basketball. Ten for Midgard, nine for Laver, seven for Freyer. Careful. Nice loss here. Got to get it up. Tipped it. Oh, I didn't realize the shot clock was about to expire. Mikey Dix, <laughs> he's, I don't know what he's going to do with it from 60 feet away from the bucket anyway. Sometimes that's a good one. Just take the L on that possession. You now the opportunity to reset your defense. Blackshirt tapping his chest. Accountability. Let's see what happens here. A little bit of discussion between the officials. What's going on here? Was it, was it, tip? Oh, it was a shot clock, right? Well, but what yeah. would they be looking at if it was tipped? Would that even, that wouldn't matter, would it? Well, they, they, they could be looking to see if at any point in time, Utah Valley had possession. If they would have had possession, that would have reset the shot clock and the, and the scorekeeper might have missed it. It looked like it was more of a scrum and the ball just kind of got punched into the backcourt more than any Wolverine, one Wolverine had actual possession of the basketball. I'm going to take a look at it one more time here. The black shirt kind of goes down. Both players kind of go down. And does any Wolverine ever have possession? Do you call that possession or is he just fumbling the ball? I don't know if he's fumbling or trying to pass it to the somebody. Tough, tough, tough one to call right there. I don't know if, if the NFL is definitely not a catch. <laughs> but, but, but well, we it, don't really know. But in college basketball, you're not quite sure if, if you can consider that a possession. Another angle. Four. It almost looked like he was trying to sling it back to somebody to, to avoid a travel situation here, but there was nobody there. So I don't I don't really know. <laughs> Obviously, the Lopes fans want it to be a possession. Coaching staff, I think that's what they were arguing. Like, hey, we should have got a fresh shot clock off of that Wolverine possession. And I think Dixon probably thought there was going to be a, a new shot clock because he was in no hurry to try to get the ball back into a scoring arrow or launch from half court. Officials huddling up. And yet another angle. I'm done guessing what they're going to try to do at this point. Just like if we make a call one way or another, so yeah. we'll keep playing. Oh, Mark oh, Madsen doesn't happy. like it, so not it must happy. be a possession. Yeah. We're going to give it back to the low. Probably put somewhere at 20, 28 or 27 seconds on the wow. on the shot clock and give the ball back to the low. You have to uh, tip your cap to Coach Madsen, though, huh? Coming in for Coach Pope. And Absolutely done a and phenomenal, phenomenal job. Phenomenal, phenomenal job, yeah. Remember, they were preseason coaches yeah. poll to finish sixth. Yeah. And here they are with a share of the crown. They're going to be hurt from in Las Vegas. Oh, that's right. They put 20 seconds on the shot, the shot, the shot clock, not four. Black shoot. Seven on the shot clock. Step back. Five. Javon's got to do something. Going to throw it up. Off the mark. Oh, did they follow him? Did Overton follow him? Yeah, Overton's going to take a seat. Oh, my goodness. Overton's fifth foul. He, he's not sure he got contact or not. He's acting like he did. And I'd like to see a replay and see if he do any, any contact. But he don't want to get a technical. Back in the 
I'm a lip reader, but I'm not going to tell you what he's yeah. saying right now, Barry. Sure. I, I, I don't think we're. My golly, that was a wrong call. <laughs> Jiminy Crickets. <laughs> Alex would give it until tell him to sit. Well, Mark Batson's got some time to get another player in here. The Lopes have to make their free throws the rest of the stretch. Do it one more time here. See if there's any contact as he draws. Kind of went by. Oh. And I, I don't know if Blackshear got his, his foot out there just enough. But anyway, it's a bad foul because it's putting Blackshear, an 80% shooter on the line for three free throws. Well, that would put a fork in him right there. Lopes fans following this program. It's a transition to D1. This their eighth year. The verge of a share of the Western Athletic Conference regular season title. 145 and counting. Woodbury dishes to Lafson. Amen. Trying to put in Lafson's hands for three. Foul. The Blackshirt. Don't want to see that. Second on Javon. Send it down to Kate. And fans that even after the final buzzer keep it locked in here at Fox 10 Extra. We'll have some uh, post game festivities and sound coming your way. Coach Drew will address uh, the crowd on this final game of the regular season plus we'll hear from some of the players and it's the one night looks fans are cheering for the Aggies if New Mexico State wins that has implications on that top seed so we'll be updating on that game right now New Mexico State is leading by 11 with three minutes to play. Lasher gets it up to Freyer. Foul. Well, nice job breaking the press. Blackshear Jr. with a blur. He threw it to the sure hand and Oscar Frere right in the center of the court to beat the backcourt violation clock. And now Frere's got to go to the line and knock down some free throws. Frere, first trip to the free throw line tonight. These are the ones that they don't matter, but they do matter. Because, you know, he's a 53% free throw shooter. In this situation, you're going to need him to step up on the line in Vegas and make some free throws. So all these free throws that these players are shooting down the, down the stretch here give them confidence going into the tournament. Long distance. Gunther pulled down by Midgard. He's fouled. You know, as I was watching Madsen saying, don't foul. He, he, he realizes he's down 14 with a minute 15 to play. He wants to get this game over with. He, the last thing he needs is one of his players to get injured in a game that he can't win going into the tournament. You know, which makes me think about Miller Moore. You know, how, how quickly will his thigh be able to get back to full strength? Uh, having the... The buy in the first round is going to be helpful. Uh, get that training step, getting to work at that stem machine on it, pumping that, that blood out of his uh, out of his leg, get it moving, try to get him back to 100% as quick as they can. They didn't have to force anything and put him back on the court when they started to open up a lead here. Yeah, that was good. Oops. Chili from the free throw line. They have enough. Came out. Turn right hand off the window and drops. I'll tell you what, for a big fella, he's got some touch. <laughs> Under a minute to go. Madsen's keeping him off. On the verge. Driving Dixon, not there. Pulled down by Amac. Dixon comes back, picks his pocket. Darthard off the glass. Good That'll hustle. do it. They, under 30 seconds to play. The shot clock is turned off. I'm sure Madsen will look, tell his guys, do not foul. Let the game clock run itself out. Here we go, Lopes fans. 
to get it over half court. Lockshire. Manson pushes the team away. 13, 12, 11, 10. Eight years in the making for Grand Canyon University. The Lopes are co-champions of the Western Athletic Conference for the first time in school history. Last night, big players made big time plays. They bounced back, and congratulations to Coach Drew and his team. The Loves bounce back. And now the 10 point victory. Time for celebration. I'm sorry, Barry. I'm really oh, happy for all these players, but especially these seniors. What a way to go off. Whack champions. Coach Drew with the microphone. Well, do as they always do. Post game. If we could all bow our heads here for our, our end game prayer, but uh, I want our four seniors, if our four seniors, if you could come over here on this side Oscar, Ash, Ali, Mikey, Ethan, over here. Best crowd in the nation. Havocs, you guys are sensational. Thank you. Our, our team would like to thank President Brian Mueller, Jerry Colangelo, Jamie Boggs. Thank you guys for your support. And, and as we pray here before we celebrate, Senior tradition, we always want to pray for our seniors before they leave. So if you guys could all bow your heads, we'll pray and pray for our five senior here as they uh, are going to leave GCU. Father God, we just want to praise you and just say thank you. Thank you for this great university. Thank you for the great fans that we have. Thank you, Lord, for this basketball team. Lord, we're so appreciative of the time spent here, Lord, for Ash, Ali, Oscar, Mikey, Ethan. We pray, Lord, that that's what they've learned at GCU faith, character, perspective on life, hard work. They take all these things with them, Lord, for the rest of their life. Thank you for blessing us tonight with this win, Lord. Please let us glorify you in all that we do. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear the Lopes it. The are victorious. 74-64. They are co-champions of the WAC. We'll have post-game interviews in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. I would say to anybody considering maybe skipping graduation to spend a long time thinking about participating. I think it's a great opportunity to really take advantage of a moment that you only get once in your life. It, it's an opportunity to really experience something that highlights all the hard work that you've put in. Not very many people get to experience that in their life. It's such an honor and a privilege to be able to do that. And I think the memories that come out of that are just incredible. Herf Jones, by your side. How does a chicken sandwich become a Whataburger spicy chicken sandwich? Is it by slathering it in a fiery sauce or adding some crazy hot toppings? Nah. If the chicken in the chicken sandwich wants to be spicy, it has to come from the inside. By marinating it in spices, frying it up, then cooling it off with fresh veggies. All on a new brioche bun. Good thing flavor can come from within. Good thing there's the new limited time spicy chicken sandwich at Whataburger. Lopes are victorious, 74-64. It's time to cut down the net. Alessandro Labor. 
<laughs> he's not quite sure where he's supposed to cut, is he? <laughs> he's got says like, hey, coach, can you give me some some instructions here? <laughs> I love it. Love it. Good for these guys. Cut down those nuts. Man, just can't stop thinking about all the players except the foundation here for GCU being a part of this tonight. Mikey Dixon, the transfer from St. John's. He has that. He's come up big this safe. year. Yeah, he really did play well. Barrier is up with that. Alex. Have to be a part of it. How about Oscar Frey? Picked up his degree. Yeah, unbelievable. The most important thing that happened this year to that young man. I'm glad he got his degree. And he had his adversary here. He had to sit out a season and work on his uh, academics. And he's come back and now he's a Western Athletic Champion. Let's send it down to Kate Longworth. Well, Ollie, I know you're taking it in with your team in this land of COVID. I'm going to try and get an attention. We have headphones. Okay. There we go. <laughs> I understand. You want to be at the team. This is a big moment. What uh, does it mean to you? What's going through your Sean mind right now? Miller, I mean, first time in GCU history that we won the Division One WAC uh, conference. No, sorry. Yeah, regular season title. So it's it's big, you know. It's you'll you'll get the wording down because it means a lot. It also comes with a top seed in the WAC tournament King next week. What will that mean to the team heading into Las Vegas, that first round bite, and then the top seed? Means uh, uh, sorry, I didn't hear anything. There was I too understand. There's me. a lot of celebration, and due to COVID, we're far apart. But next week, as you head to Vegas, this also means you have ensured the top yeah. seed. How will that help the Lopes heading there, and what will be the game plan to be victorious in Vegas? Just play hard like we've been doing uh, for the first part of the season. We we are a little like after 20, 21 days that we were off, we kind of struggled a little bit to get our rhythm back. And I think today we showed what kind of team we are and what kind of team we can be. So we just got to play the same way and we're going to. Yeah, we definitely saw the emotion, the urgency from the Lopes tonight. But for you, playing in your final regular season, your final home game here in the Lopes uniform, what have the last two games been like for you? It's been amazing. Uh, it's been a, I'll say a dream. We've been in the position to, you know, win the, win the conference regular season. And it's just been a dream so far to be here. And now we got to finish it up in Vegas. It's been a crazy year for everyone, and you guys have had to make a lot of adjustments. It's been an unusual schedule, a lot of time off, these back-to-back -back games. But Coach Drew said the success is all because of you players. The fact that you were able to buy in with the new coaching staff and the new system. Why were you guys able to do that? How were you able to co to trust Coach Drew? You know, they made it easy. Uh, we just He just asked us max effort every time in practice, and after a few games that we play we saw the results and we just you know kept buying in in the, in the new program and in what Coach Drew wanted us to do. The season is not over however we've had a lot of fun watching and calling your games what memories will you take with you from being in a GC? Tonight <laughs> definitely tonight you know winning winning it's amazing. And you saved that net right once you figured out how to go up there and clip the net you got your, yeah, you got no, your momentum. I, I never never did it before so you know I had to figure it out somehow. Thank you Gabe. All right. <laughs> Well, go celebrate with your Thank teammates. You. Congratulations. Thank Thanks you. for making it a fun run for us. Thank we you. wish you the best of luck. We've never done it before. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. A lot of first to come. Mm. Hopefully this is just the first of many. We got to just soak all this in. First title in school history. Jaden Stone yeah, went down with a bit of an injury. He's close to coming back. Perhaps you'll see some time in Las Vegas at the Orleans Arena. It's lethal from beyond the arc. Part of that fab freshman class. Looks like Chance McMillan came on big. And there's Bryce Drew. Right, they say the last uh, string to move the net for Coach Drew. I'm sure that'll go around his neck go. and in his trophy case. What a first year. Uh, under a lot of difficult situations, as Kate mentioned, with the COVID, and the absence of games, the cancellations, having to find 
teams on the fly to play. He has kept his team focused through all of that, and he's gone on to claim the championship for a piece of it. Congrats to Coach Drew and his coaching staff. Havocs, past, present, all celebrating here tonight with the Lopes victorious 74-64. They're all part of that post-game picture. <laughs> Looks like a big right selfie. Everybody's a part of it. You know, the Havocs were a big part of it. When yeah. they were down by 10 early in the game and really came roaring back. Send it down to Kate Longworth. All right, thank you guys. Well, Coach, you guys pulled it off tonight. What led to the big victory tonight with the Lopes? You know, we rebounded the ball. We, we were so much more aggressive tonight. Again, I think the weight of coming in this weekend really weighed on our guys. Uh, it was heavy yesterday. We didn't play with the same freedom we usually play with uh, today. We came out with a lot of freedom, a lot of aggressiveness, and and uh, just so happy for these guys and uh, and what they've achieved so far this year. How do you carry over now this momentum into Vegas to hopefully keep up these winning ways? What is the what do the Lopes need to do to continue uh, the victory? You know, a, a, a big part is process and experience. You know, learning how to win in big games, and you know, thankfully we were given two opportunities this weekend. I think our team grew a lot. We learned a lot from night one to night two. And again, these are high level games. You know, there's a lot at stake in these games uh, when you get to March. And so hopefully this experience again will, will carry over into practice on Monday and then uh, go with us into Vegas. Can you believe we're standing here talking about this right now, a championship in the regular season? When you look back on the year that has been, why do you think the Lopes have found the success? You know, we have great administration. Again, it starts at the top, President uh, Mueller. Uh, Jerry Colangelo, Jamie Box, uh, they're just fantastic people, um, visionaries, and and our, our, our fans, again, there were times in this game we were down. Um, they really lift us up, especially at home, but, you know, our, our players really bought in. New staff, sometimes it's difficult. You don't buy in as, as quick, but they've done a great job really buying into what we're trying to do, and they've put the work in. They've put the hours in the gym, um, the sweat. Um, and all the hard work, so really happy for our players. The season is not over yet, but when you look at uh, what started your career here uh, with the Lopes back on March 17th of last year, where you're at now, what does it mean to you to walk up that ladder and cut down the nets? You, you know, it's a great blessing. You, you, you know, uh, you, you know, God blesses your life at different times. His, his timing's perfect. And, uh, you know, I'm just very thankful that I'm able to coach at GCU um, with the great people that we have at this school and to be able to coach these group of men and, and for them to achieve it. Um, again, to see the smile on their faces, uh, that makes all the hard work well worth it. I know the work will start for you right now, but for this moment, we're giving you permission. Savor it. Hold up that net. Celebrate with the audience at home right now. I know they wish they could be here with you at GCU. We're, we're, we're going to go celebrate in that locker room. Thank you. Thanks all Lopes fan. Lopes up. Thank you so much, Coach. Congratulations. We wish you the best of luck in Vegas. Well, guys, here we are, right? Here we are. Eight years in the making, Kate, and the uh, Lopes are co-champions of the Western Athletic Conference with a 10-point victory over Utah Valley. And from all indications, nothing official from the conference, but it would appear that they have the number one seed. That uh, still nothing from the conference as of yet. There were some differentials there with New Mexico State. It would appear that they would be, uh, and that would just be kind of icing on the cake there. It really was. I, I, everything Coach Drew said was uh, so on point. Um, he, his team has worked really hard um, in, in that lab on those days where they couldn't get games, uh, trying to stay focused, staying together, not splintering. They had those little, little rough patch, and uh, they, they stayed the course, stayed together. It showed on the plate at, uh, on the floor tonight. He mentioned the fact that they were tight uh, on Friday night and came back, played looser and freer, and, and got the big victory after falling from you know behind by 10. They, they just really just turned on the afterburners and uh, left the Wolverines in their wake. They could never catch up. I'm real happy for this program. Uh, all the hard work the coach, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to be sitting next to you, partner. I know <laughs> it's been, been a, a, a kind of a fun ride for us over the yes, years. And I, I almost want to go down and get one of those championship T-shirts myself. Yeah. I feel like I've earned one I just up here with, with you calling, it, calling this action. I'm real excited for this program and, and the direction that it's headed. No doubt about it. It's time for our... Copper State Credit Union player of the game, Ashbourne Mitgar, the double-double. 
Well, he was fantastic in this game. And he grew up from Friday night to Saturday night overnight. I think he had an opportunity to watch some film and think about the way he was moving away from the basket and decided tonight I'm going to be more aggressive at going to the basket. I love that rebel yell after the offensive <laughs> rebound and put back. But that's really what it was. He set a tone. Laver set a tone, Frere set a tone. Uh, all the starters, you know, 35 of their, four, uh, excuse me, 25 of their 35 points in the first half. They set the tone of how aggressive they were going to play, how freely they were going to play, and the rest of the team followed along. They got a good bump off the bench with the energy from McLaughlin and Miller Moore, and um, uh, they were off and running after that. How about Alessandro Laver? 16 points. And nine rebounds, yet 16 points last night as well. Well, senior leadership is really what it showed tonight. You know, second all-time Division I GCU leader. Um, it was a pleasure to watch him over the four years grow from being kind of a gangly, off-balance freshman to having some of the best footwork the Western Athletic Conference has ever seen mixed in with the outside game. He was a force to be reckoned with over his force of his four years. I mean, freshman player of the year, conference player of the year, uh, just a phenomenal young man as well. Great and, and well-spoken, a great representative of GCU basketball. It's time to revisit the Sanderson Ford keys to the game. I can't wait for number three. Well, we talked about, you know, uh, defense wins game, but rebounding wins championships. They are a plus 10 on the glass tonight, and they take part, part of that title home as a result. Points in the paint were absolutely huge. 34 to 26, a second chance points, even better, 14-0. They did not get beat up on the uh, on the defensive glass like they were a night ago, and they wanted it more tonight. They, they, you, as, as Kate's coach, soccer coach, used to say, "Who wants it? Yep. Lopes want it, and they got it." Kate, your uh, your soccer coach did say, uh, "Who wanted it?" and they definitely stepped up here tonight. How about that first uh, half and and that distance that they found themselves down the hole, 15 to five. Then they went on a 30 to 15 run and really uh, took it over from there. Yeah, 30-15 run in the half. It was a big 22 to seven push right in the middle of that 30 to 15 run where they were absolutely fantastic. Really spaced them out well, mixed in the drives, the outside shots. They knocked in three three-point shots in a row. Dixon with a step back here, and you get Labor in the corner. He uh, on the wing, rather, he gets a, a three-point shot. It, it was a beautiful thing to watch because you wondered if they were going to be left for dead when they fell behind by 10, but they responded in a big way, wow. took the fight right to the Wolverines and got the Wolverines on their heels, and they never got back on balance after that. They shut down Cole. They did a good job on Overton. They did a good job on Woodbury. They need to bottle this yeah, and do, take it they? to Vegas with them. 14 to nothing, second chance points. Kate Longworth, I know that uh, you apparently have confirmed that that top seed in the Western Athletic Conference now is secured, right? Yes, talking with GCUSID, Josh Hauser, he did say that the Lopes with the New Mexico State win, as I said, the first time Lopes fans are ever going to cheer for the Aggies, but it was a condition if the Aggies could come out and win tonight that would ensure the top seed for the Lopes. So all indications are saying that the Lopes are a go with that buy and top seed for Vegas. And it was fun, guys. I tell you what, if they can bring this urgency with them to Orleans Arena, I think they could find themselves in a very successful position, hopefully, a week out. And I feel like probably every team, but, you know, this team, they, they feel like they have some unfinished business. I think all college basketball players out there this season, more meaningful than ever after uh, losing the tournament play last year with COVID-19. I think when everyone steps on the court, you're just going to, feel that emphasis and how great it is and hopefully the love for the game shines through because I think that's what coach Drew is really trying to preach with this team show the emotion show the fire and of course show you want it right <laughs> yeah, who wants it right? That's right yeah they definitely stepped up but we know right this is a they can celebrate tonight but New Mexico State's been winning some games here you know they're not going to go away quietly to defending conference champions and this team Utah Valley playing really tough uh, it's going to be a, a, a tough, tough tournament. So uh, we shall see what happens at the Orleans Arena in Vegas. The good news is I think Coach Drew really uh, keeps his team bottled up on how they celebrate. Go in, enjoy the moment, and then you kind of put it to rest, you know. And I think although no one was really a fan of the back-to-back, -back, and I think Coach Drew maybe least of them, <laughs> the yeah, right. fans of this back-to-back, -back, that kind of has prepared them for 
the short turnaround, had that short memory. Last night, he was wondering how they would respond. It was a very emotional defeat, and they came out today ready to fire on all cylinders. So I think, like you said, Barry, you got to be aware. Uh, you got to know the Aggies are always a threat. We saw what the Wolverines can do. And so I think that, yeah, Coach Drew will let them, you know, relish this moment, but then remind them there's still a lot of business and work ahead. Well, the uh, regular season comes to a close. Our basketball broadcast schedule comes to a close as well. Kate, Scott, couldn't have put a better uh, exclamation point on the number of years that we've spent together calling these games on uh, on television for GCU basketball. We'll, we'll relish this evening, no doubt, after uh, all the games that we've gone through together. Uh, wish you guys uh, all the best and look forward to yet another season coming up in the fall. I thank was making sure you ensured us that other season. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Parker. I've enjoyed it. Let's go get some champagne. No doubt about it. That'll do it from GCU Arena tonight where the Lopes are victorious over Utah Valley 74-64, securing the co-champions banner atop the Western Athletic Conference for the first time in school history. Next up, GCU Baseball will come your way April 13th when they host the University of Arizona. But until then, for Kate Longworth, Scott Williams, and her entire crew, I'm Barry Butel. Wishing you a very wonderful Saturday night.